you by Utah Intermountain GMC truck dealers as Skyline kicks it away. And that will be into the end zone. As you pointed out before, you cannot return in high school football when the ball's kicked in the end zone. Jake Bryan is the young man who caught it. So Fremont will take over with that high-powered offense. Olin Hannum, there he is, number 12. 2,400 yards passing this year. They love to throw it. 18 touchdowns, 14 interceptions. He had 244 yards against Bountiful to get into this game. And Fremont, the Silver Wolves, set to go, and they'll go right to the air. Adams' pass is complete to Bryan. And this kid has got an absolute cannon for an arm. He threw, and that's one of his, there's, there's the guy he's going to be throwing it to, too. He's going to hit Brian several times today. These guys were so explosive. They combined on two big pass play in their state semifinal win down at BYU last week. And, you know, here they're running an out pattern on the side, but they will go deep. I mean, they will go right down the field. They'll come right at you, take you one-on-one -on -one down the sideline and try and beat you, and they do. Game in and game out, they do. Bryant's had 1,155 yards receiving coming into the game, so as you say, he's a favorite target of Owen Hannum. First and 10, Hannum again to throw. Screen pass, intercepted! Intercepted at the 25-yard line, and just like in the 4A game, this game starts out with a turnover. Well, Kurt Flinders got a hand on the ball and actually tipped it and kept it up in the air so Sorensen could pick it off. You'll see Hannum drop it off in the flat, and you really can't put this interception on a quarterback. Once it goes off your receiver's hands, right there, the ball tipped in the air. Sorensen's got the tip drill. It works. Yep. You do That's it in pregame. That's why they do that in pra practice of pregame. So Skylight comes out. Boy, this is deja vu. Gus Papanikolic is the quarterback, number nine, and they come out throwing. Pass is complete to Peck. And Peck all the way down to the seven-yard line, and the option team comes out and goes to the air. Talking to the Fremont coaches yesterday, I said, why, or, or what is the big difference between Skyline, when you beat them in the opener, their only loss of the year, and now they said, now they throw the ball much better. He said, they're an option team, they were working on that in the preseason, they didn't throw the ball that well early in the year. He says, we've seen in the playoffs, they've been able to throw the ball very effectively. He says, we didn't face that in the season opener, and there you go, first and goal, thanks to the pass. The 4A game we came out, it took forever before a ball was, was thrown or caught anyway. Here they've come out and the teams have had three passes. Now they go to the ground game, Peck, fumble. Still a scramble for the ball and it will be a touchback. Fremont gets it back. First and 10 for Fremont at the 20 yard line. Folks, we are about a minute into this game and we've had two turnovers already. And we showed you the highlights from the 4A final, a huge play in that game. The fumble in the end zone, Box Elder recovered for a touchdown. Here, after the fumble, you see the ball come out, clearly a fumble before he was down, it goes into the end zone, and everybody's got a shot at this ball. And this is a dog pile, both teams touching it. And Fremont recovers. It looks like the recovery was made by Sean Van Tassel. He's a senior, plays wide receiver on offense, defensive back on defense, and he made the fumble recovery in the end zone. So they trade turnovers in the first two minutes. We're right back where we started from. First and 10 at the 20 for Fremont. Hannum looking deep. He's got a big arm. Brian, and Brian falls down. He just lost his body, was a little bit beyond his feet, and he couldn't keep his feet trying to look back. That ball just traveled 65 to 70 yards in the air. The line of scrimmage is the 20. Hannum was behind the line. He threw it almost to the other 20-yard line, That's and it's on a diagonal. He was in the middle of the field. He threw it over to the numbers on the near sideline. This kid has got a big league arm, folks. The thing about it is, even though the pass is incomplete, if you're a defensive back, a safety or a corner, you're thinking, uh, i got to play back a little ways with this guy. They can go deep, second and ten. Handoff inside and quickly read. The draw play does not work as Kurt Flinders is nailed. When Skyline read that, there were way too many dark jerseys coming up their blocks in the backfield just waiting to make that hit. Bills was the first guy there. But you can see, and it's effective play because they throw the ball so well, but nothing doing. Six-yard loss on that play. That's going to bring up a third and 16. So, again, Hannum's going to have to go to the air. 
And we, we're not sure Hannum can throw the ball to the first yeah. down markers. <laughs> We've seen his arm already. yards, jeez. Yeah. He warms up with those. And he's got he's got three receivers. They need to cross the 30-yard line, and Hannum doesn't like what he sees. I didn't notice the play clock. It looked like it was getting close to the end, but Hannum's going to take a timeout. You know, I'm not sure. I think they only had 10 players on the field because they only had one back and they had no tight ends. They only had three wide receivers. Well, they'll bring in the extra player. No score yet. R.C. Willie and Sony say no, no, no. No interest and no payments on select Sony products till January 97. Buy $500, pay nothing for 12 months. Buy 1,000 and pay nothing till January 97. Nobody beats R.C. Willie prices. This Sony 20-inch stereo monitor with remote 297. This Sony 4-head VCR 199. A Sony 8mm camcorder with color viewfinder 597. Sony digital satellite system 649. Hurry, don't miss the best offer anyone has ever made on quality Sony products. Nobody beats R.C. Willie. Nobody. With a newly enhanced Vortec 4300 V6 engine and available push-button four-wheel drive, the GMC Jimmy can handle virtually anything you might encounter on the road. But you may appreciate Jimmy even more for its ability to get you out of your own driveway. Lease a new Jimmy for just $3.39 a month for 24 months at your Utah Intermountain GMC truck dealers now. are available at great expectations inside Valley Fair. No score yet at Rice Stadium in the 5A championship, but we've seen some fireworks so far. A couple of fumbles, each lost. And now a third and 16. Owen Hannum, the senior quarterback. Five wide receivers, and he's thrown deep, but it will be overthrown over the head of Kurt Flinders. So this will be the first punt we have seen the entire day. <laughs> and Rice Stadium. And for you punting fans, we apologize for that. Both of them were very upset with us. <laughs> 79 points in the 4A game, and a couple times teams went for it on fourth down, so we had some turnovers, never did see a punt in that game. Hannah, by the way, the punter, too, kind of the old, uh, you know, Randall Cunningham did that at UNLV, and a little bit now and then in the NFL. Hannah the punt. Fair catch is called for, almost Ooh. fumbled. Ooh, that would have been costly. They'll mark this at the 49-yard line, so Skyline will take over there. But an interesting first couple of minutes, at any rate, as both teams coming out, showing a couple of nice plays, but then losing turnovers. Well, the interesting thing uh, to remember there is Fremont burned a timeout, too. They might need that at the half if they get, uh, they get a drive going. They might need a timeout. They did burn that because they were a player short. They were missing a receiver. Somebody didn't get into the game. Gus Papanicholas is the quarterback, number nine, and they're into the full wishbone now. The pitch outside, another fumble. And Fremont comes up again. Peck, that's two fumbles. Was it Peck that fumbled that one? I believe so. Just couldn't catch the pitch cleanly, and the Fremont side in front of us just exploded. Their fans are loving this. Let's see, watch the, let's watch the pitch here. Yeah, and then it took the big hop because it went off his knee after it went through his arms. That's a great, that's, that's Ozzie Smith going into the hole right there. That <laughs> ball could have easily gotten away from Flinders, and there was nobody else there for Fremont. If he hadn't been able to pick that ball up on the short hop and smother it, Skyland would have gotten the ball back. Three turnovers in the first three minutes of this game, and Owen Hannon brings his Fremont Silver Wolves back out, makes the pitch, and he's going down. Hannum is sacked. Well, they do not. You know, you hear a lot about, especially with the Raiders running the West Coast offense, and the Niners are running it, and now Philly's running it. We're talking all these short patterns. Fremont airs it out. They had two receivers down inside the 20-yard line. Hannum was looking deep and just couldn't get it. They faked the pitch. It's not quite a play-action pass, but kind of similar effect. Get those guys out playing the run, but then he's buried before he can go deep. That's the problem with the long patterns. They take a while to develop. Interesting game so far, Reese, with all these turnovers. Reese Stein is on the field. Reese. Okay, 
He's taking a break. Hand him to pass. It's caught. But they're going to be well short of the first. It'll bring up a third and about 12. Let's go down to Reese Stein. I'll tell you what, the Fremont offensive line's doing a great job in pass blocking, and they're not listed as that big. From here, they look bigger than they are. 54, Luke Rasmussen listed at 165. Chad Anderson at 165. Jared Prince at 190. The biggest guy down there, number 66. Jadon Judkins at 205. Uh, Skyline actually has bigger size, but they're doing a wonderful job pass blocking, giving the quarterback plenty of time. Jadon, uh, we don't think is related to Jeff Judkins. At least the coach said he didn't think so. Third down, Hannum. Hannum's in trouble. And Hannum will go down again. No gain. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, but Fremont's going to have to give it up. And the pass rush of Skyline is awesome right now. Yeah. And I think the Fremont fans would like Reese to refrain from any further mentions. <laughs> you know, but they, they also rushed. That wasn't a pure four-man rush there either. They had more guys in there. But uh, the, th the interesting thing about Fremont is they are they are going deep down. I mean, they are running some deep patterns here early on. They are looking for the big play every time. They're going to test Skyline. Fremont has brought a huge contingency of fans with them. This west side uh, grandstands are just packed. Another fair catch called for, and Skyline will take over at the 23-yard line. Their possessions have gone back, 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 and when we come back, the Eagles have it at the 23. 23! Effort is, is essential. If you're out there and, and you know everything there is to know about the game of basketball, but you're not willing to put forth the effort on the floor, the thought process isn't going to do you much good. So uh, you have to be willing to go out there, uh, get your hands dirty, so to speak, and go to work. First Security Bank, currently giving 110%. George thinks he knows about fresh fish. He spends cold cash to sit in a cold boat drinking cold coffee. That's fun. Men are weird. I just come to Dan's. I get really fresh Market Street seafood, not just trout. And I always get my limit. Saturday only, get Market Street raw tiger shrimp at our lowest price this year, just $3.49 per pound. And certified Angus prime rib roast is just $4.99 per pound. And that's what I call a great deal. Easy Rent to Own, home of the $5 delivers, brings you Utah's lowest prices. With Utah's largest selection of top name brands, we still guarantee to beat all competitor pricing. TVs and VCRs only $6.99, washers and dryers at $9.99, stereos as low as $12.99, and sofas and love seats starting at $9.99 per week. So pick up your phone and call us now. It's so easy to rent to own, go by free to to own. There's the Fremont bench, and behind them, a large crowd has made the trek down from up in the Ogden area. No score yet. It's been a game of turnovers, three of them, two by Skyline, one by Fremont. And the Eagles take over now. Abba Nicholas keeps and gets around for an eight-yard pickup as they come out of that option offense. A little something that uh, Coach Dupay picked up, actually, originally, started watching Air Force. I guess if you're going to run the option, you may as well start with the best in the nation. Yeah, and he, he actually got the idea watching a game which all BYU fans hate to be reminded of. It's the opening of the new stadium. Air Force went in in 1982 and beat BYU there and ruined the opener for the stadium, and he saw that game and thought, I'm going to be doing that. Big hole for Shane Kojima. Air Force hasn't had much luck since that first game. Let's go down on the field to Reese Stein, Reese. You notice there they broke the wishbone that time, looked a lot like the old Davis double wing, the old run and shoot. Uh, Skyline has really diversified this wishbone offense. They can come at you a variety of ways. Well, you saw Papa Nicholas keep it for the one, and then they go right up the middle. They I know, I know that uh, Blaine Monkers would love to keep the ball out of Kojima's hands. He's kind of the bruiser, number two, and there he goes. But Coach Monkers told me that one thing they'd like to do is take Kojima away from the running attack, and so far, they haven't been able to do it. He is a great athlete. He's also, in addition to being you know, one of the best running backs on this team, he's a captain on the wrestling team. He'll go straight from football to wrestling after this game is over. Look at him just putting his head down. He keeps going. Also, track, baseball, rugby. So he's, he's not afraid to take a hit? Five-sport athlete, not bad. 
again. Hoshima, look at him. Tough to bring down as he picks up eight more. Running right between the hash marks, no problem. You know, if he loves football, it's just that the pads get in the way. Huh? Yeah. You gotta play a little rugby. He played rugby. You gotta play rugby. Shane Kojima, six foot, 225 pound senior. Well, he captains the wrestling team, but Nick Hansen, who's also in the backfield, captain on the football team, so plenty of leaders. A lot of leadership on this team, senior-oriented squad. This time, the pitch to the outside is going to work for... They got a first down out of that. I think he got it on the second effort. Yep. He spun back inbounds. And he wouldn't have gotten it without the second effort. That's Jared Brockman, number 34. You can see Fremont trying to keep it contained, trying to keep him inside. They force the pitch, but he gets all the way to the sideline, and then one-on-one, -on -one, watch this, he spins away, and that's the extra effort that got the first down. He had to get across the 35-yard line to get the first down. He wouldn't have done it without that spin move. Half a Nicholas to the air, going deep. Well covered and intercepted. Skyline doesn't throw a whole lot. Papa Nicholas, Coach Dupe will admit, does not have a really strong arm, and that pass was underthrown and caught by Kurt Flinders. Now, Flinders recovered the fumble on the first of Skyline's three turnovers, or maybe it was the second one, but he recovered a fumble earlier. Watch him here with his body. He screens the receiver away. He gets inside position, so it's either intercepted or incomplete. Great play by Flinders. Sometimes when you go for the pick, you got to gamble, and if you miss, you give up a touchdown. But he gets inside position. And that fumble recovery and an interception for Flinders in the first quarter. Skyline already has three turnovers. Three turnovers for Skyline. One for Fremont. They almost lost the ball again right there. Well, the flip side of this, though, is that's three turnovers for Skyline, and Fremont's not turned any of them into right. points yet. Although, you know, we'll see what they can do here. 0-0 zero, zero the score so far. Be interesting to see as this game develops, too, about the durability of these teams. As we mentioned during the 4A game, you got Fremont that has practically the whole team with the exception of a couple players playing offense and defense. Skyline doesn't really have any, although Jared Brockman will play some. But uh, for Fremont, Blaine Mockers, he uses his whole team on both sides of the ball. And you got to wonder if they're going to wear down later in this game. Especially with Skyline running such a punishing offense. Yep, second and ten. Adam. Adam's pass is overthrown. Going for Flinders. And he's, oh, there's an example. Flinders comes out there. He has to defend the pass. Comes up with the interception. Get right back up. And now he's running patterns. Well, that ball was overthrown. We've seen a few overthrown passes here. you got to wonder if Hannum's got a little adrenaline rush going here. State championship yep. game, first quarter. He may settle down to get in a rhythm a little later. But right now, that arm, which is plenty strong enough as it is. Yeah, really. It's funny, I was reading these stats on the all-time winningest playoff team. Skyline certainly one of them with a 47-16 and 16 record. But so is Fremont. They're 1,000. They're 3-0 <laughs> and in the postseason. Third down, 10 yards to go, Hannah's pass, it's caught. It's gonna be, it's all gonna depend on the spot. I mean, he is right oh, at the first down. He may have gotten a good spot on that. He may have it, he has to go past the 17 yard line. Sean Van Tassel made the catch. He gets driven back here, he makes the catch. Boom, there's forward progress, but I don't think he's to the 17 from that angle. Not the best angle, admittedly. He gets driven back to the 15. They mark it short of the 17. They need about two feet. Boy, it'd be tough to run a fake here. Hate to do that all backed up in your own end. Yeah, they're gonna punt it away. Yeah, you gotta do it. Early in the game inside your own 20. Adams kick. Nice, that's Boot. much better punt than the last one. Back to the 42 yard line. Jason Anderson, and he's wrapped up there. Nowhere to go. Well, Anderson was juking, trying to get to the sideline, and usually when you break the big ones, once in a while you can run to the sideline, but most times you got to turn it straight upfield. Watch James Dye, write down everything he does. <laughs> not a bad guy. And James Dye, is, I mean, this is not a big kid. I mean, no, he might be 5'6", 5'7". Five, five, but you watch, he takes punt returns yep. straight upfield, and that enabled Fremont. Oh, that was a pretty good punt. Boy, it's tough when the quarterback's yards. back punting. you got to watch him every time. Guy with that arm Big standing back there punting. Yep. Quick handoff right down the pipe, and Kojima has got this play. 
the dive right up the middle, which in most wishbones is really just a setup for everything else. You know, it's usually worth two or three plays. He's run it big several times, although Kojima comes up limping. He's limping back into the huddle, but picks up about uh, nine yards there. Four carries but for look 30. At him. Oh, he's, yeah. He's, he was limping. Kojima coming out of the huddle. He's clearly limping as he comes to the line of scrimmage. Now, there's a tough kid. Boy, look at the block he just put on a kid, though. <laughs> he may be limping, but he hit a block at about the Fremont 45. He's slow to get up. Yeah, I think uh, Kojima is going to have a little trouble here. They may not descend him. There he goes. He's going to go to the sideline now. Yep. He's favoring. Well, here's the replay. Now, watch him. He's on the left side of the screen. He drives the man. He's blocking out of the picture. But he's limping off, and he's favoring his left ankle or knee, and he's putting no weight on it as he goes to the sideline. Now that young man is a very important part of this running attack. You know, Peck's got 420 yards, Hanson 340 yards, the guys on each side, but Kojima, over 1,000 yards coming into the game. That's the guy they like to go to, and right now he's on the sideline. Ryan Smith, I think, no, it was Black who came in carrying the play, so. A little reverse to the inside goes Nick Hanson, well read. He'll only pick up a couple. Looked like they had brought Jared uh, Brockman in to replace Kojima there, and Hanson and uh, Peck, I think, were also in the backfield with him. Brockman, again, he's the one player on this team that will play on both sides of the ball. His real position, of course, is the corner. He may There's Kojima. Yeah, he is hurt. Yeah, he uh, Brockman may get a lot of work now with Kojima on the bench. Brockman and Peck. The running backs, and again, they'll go right up the middle with Peck. Jackson Peck. And this is a punishing attack. Yep. And again, it's going to be very interesting to see how Fremont is able to deal with this as the game wears on, because Skyline's physical. If you're wondering about Fremont, it's an Ogden area school. They pulled in about three quarters of their students when they opened two years ago, about three quarters from Weber High, and about the other quarter came from the Roy High area. Third down, they need a few yards, pitch outside, and Brockman. Again, this is all gonna depend on the spot. From here, it looks like he's about half a yard short. He had to get inside the 37, and he is gonna be short. Reese Stein is down very close to this play, Reese. It's, uh, it's punishing on the field right now, isn't it? It really is, and uh, Fremont's doing a wonderful job at containing the option to the outside, something that East was unable to do uh, in the 4A championship game, and boy, they're just swarming. They got three, four guys out there, and they stopped this one just shy. Well, they're going to have a measurement here. Notice on the replay, though, another juggle. They're not handling the pitches cleanly. They already fumbled one away, and now there's a little juggling act there. I'm sure everybody's a little fired up, yep. as you pointed out, with uh, the passes from Owen Hannum. Yeah, he is short. Although you would think the Skyline kids may be a little less so because the playoffs have just, uh, they've become a habit for yeah. Skyline. The last three no, years, right. Skyline has played 11 playoff games. So not only is that a full extra season of games, a full extra season of experience and experience in a playoff atmosphere, but think of all the extra practices the Skylines have been, kids have been through, all the extra repetitions they've got. Coach Roger DePay, the winningest active coach right now in high school football here. His team 11-1 this year, their only loss to the team they're looking at right now, and that was in the opener. Fourth down and about a foot. They got it. They got the first down. And spots inside the 36-yard line. That'll be a first down. Credit Papa Nicholas for keeping his feet. He was wrapped up. Well, the thing you notice is not only is he keeping his feet, but he's keeping his legs turning. The legs keep moving. And that gives him a chance to spin away, right? Well, he had the ball out there loosely, didn't he? He's palming it. But you see, the legs are still going. He leans. I guess that first down with a little despair. Gus Papa Nicholas. Boy, the ball was really out there, though. Carrying it like a loaf of bread. Just First a point of friends. <laughs> They'll take it on the ground again, and that dive play's working well. This time, Jack Peck. I think, I think that play's worked every time they run. They may, may have missed it on one. Yeah, that play's part of the reason they're 11-1. and one. 
with 11 straight wins. That's kind of the bread and butter of the play of this offense. Now Skyline's first three position, possessions have ended in turnovers, but the fourth one here, they got something going now. No score after one quarter. The last thing this planet needs is another goofy gadget taking up valuable space. Yeah. Must be why Proform invented the Space Saver Crosswalk. They don't call it Space Saver for nothing. <laughs> get it? Then get it. quarter of the state 5a football championships no score yet it's been a game of turnovers and Fremont has brought, brought quite a contingency with them only the second year for this young school the Silver Wolves and they're trying to become the first team ever to win a state title in just their second year to mention that Highland High School alma mater of a certain KUTV sports reporter who might be on the sideline right now. <laughs> Won a title in their third year, 1959, third year they were open. Let's say, that's Reese, as a matter of fact. Senior class, though. All right, we'll give credit for that, Reese. That's fine. <laughs> Reese wants it. Okay, it was two and a half years, Reese. There you go. <laughs> It is tough, though, because some schools do play varsity football the first year with just sophomores and juniors. Take a look at these first quarter stats. Fremont not rushing the ball very well. No, but they are a big play team. And, you know, sometimes the stats are a trend, but sometimes they're not. And Fremont, they just exploded in their semifinal win. 15 total yards, though, in that first quarter. That doesn't bode well so far. Skyline, though, you look at the, the stats, though, and it's a 0-0 game, so the three turnovers really cost them. Fremont probably fortunate to be in this position right now again is Jack Peck and that time the dive is red and stopped. It'll be maybe a gain of half a yard bringing up a second and about nine. Been a beautiful afternoon for football. The sun starting to fade now. It might get a little chilly down on the field. Skyline High School looking a little bit like Notre Dame with those polished Gold Dome helmets. Again, the pitch to the outside. And Brockman will pick up six yards, bringing up a third at about three. Let's go down to Reese. Reese? Hey, I'll tell you what, the trench warfare down here is awesome. One problem Skyline has with Kojima out, they haven't been as effective up the middle. You saw him get stopped a couple of times. That time they went to the outside and picked up the six yards. This offense really needs that fullback threat to keep everybody tightened in there. And without it, uh, they're not going to be as effective. Well, let's we'll see what happens now. They've got nine yards to go to get into the end zone. And as Reese pointed out, Kojima, their top runner, is on the sideline with a sore ankle. Nothing doing. Well, Jared Brockman, as he is wrapped up, and you can hear the sound of those, the popping of those pads all the way up here. I mean, there is some hitting going on. You really got to stand on the sidelines at a high school game sometime and listen to really appreciate it. And these kids watch. And you just see Fremont kids diving all over the place. They're watching the pros on Sunday. They're watching the college kids on Saturday just throw themselves around. They go out to imitate that, and they, it's, it's really amazing when you stand on the sideline and watch them just pop each other. Well, right now, they're going to line up for a field goal. Richard Critchfield, three of five field goals so far this year. 26-yarder. Has just enough to get there. And so Reese, the uh, field goal works out and someone's finally on the board. Hey, the field goal has been an effective weapon. He hadn't made many, but he's made them when they need to. And Skyline is on the board with the lead. Three zip. 
9.31 to go in the first half. With a newly enhanced Vortec 4300 V6 engine and available push-button four-wheel drive, the GMC Jimmy can handle virtually anything you might encounter on the road. But you may appreciate Jimmy even more for its ability to get you out of your own driveway. Lease a new Jimmy for just $3.39 a month for 24 months at your Utah Intermountain GMC truck dealers now. How far do you have to go for great tasting water? As far as your faucet. The Brita water filtration pitcher has the special Brita filter that reduces chlorine flavor, lead, the things nature never intended. And the taste? Wonderful. Brita. Tap into great taste. Available at Target. the brakes on 73 guys to become the champ. You probably break more times than that every time you get into your car. So you should be sure your brakes are up to it. The best place to do that is at Monarchy, where you'll always get high quality brakes at a great price. So come into Monarchy. It could be one of the most important stops you make. Take it from the champ. At Monarchy, you're not going to pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. I guarantee it. Oh, sure, they're feeling good now, but it's going to get a little chilly down there. Some of the Fremont fans on hand as their team trailing now 3-zip. And the Skyline had to hold those balloons for a long time, but they're on the board with the Critchfield field goal. Had a 30-yarder to beat Hunter a couple weeks ago and stay alive in the postseason. No pressure there. The offense drove down the field. He kicked a field goal with three seconds left for a 23-21 win. What's impressive is he just missed an extra point, and he knew that was the difference in the game. Still, he was able to come back. Sometimes with kickers, they miss one big kick, and they're all done for the day. And he did. He nailed the winner. And as he said, all that did was keep him in the playoffs. No problem. This kickoff brought to you by your Utah Intermountain TNC truck dealers. Kick is away. And Fremont making a move. Looked like they were going to fake a reverse there. Brian is nailed at the 22-yard line. Kyle Hansen popped him. Just another big hit in this game. Well, Fremont with uh, a first quarter that only produced 15 yards. They had three skyline turnovers, and none of them led to points. Now they don't have very good field position here, back up on their own 22-yard line. But this is a big play offense, and you got to wait and see if they can break one. First and 10 as Fremont comes back out with Owen Hannum, who, by the way, plays uh, a linebacker on defense. And Hannum, he's dragged down from behind. Another sack for the defense. Simi Lott with the sack. Well, all sacks are not created equal here. Watch Hannum. He feels the pressure. He's taking a deep drop. This could be a seven-yard loss, maybe 10 if he steps back and panics, but he steps up in the pocket, and he gets back four or five of those yards. So it's only a two- or three-yard loss. They do lose the down, but at least he didn't lose seven to 10 yards on that. Sometimes you see a quarterback in trouble, and he drops back another five yards and really turns yep. in a big loss. Hannum again, and again a big rush. He, he gets, gets out of that one, though. Another turnover. There's going to be a fight here. They're going to give it to Skyline. Well, that could prove to be costly. And let's take a look from the R.C. Willie best seat in the house as Olin Hannum did a terrific job of getting out of trouble, but it didn't end well. He's got no time in the pocket, slips away from two Eagles. Now here, he makes a great cut back inside. That's not as impressive as running out of Travis Hyams' grasp, but then hit from behind. It was a man coming up from behind who stripped the that, ball. That's the angle from the R.C. Willie best seat in the house. A one-arm tackle. 
Nicholas. Papa Nicholas gets back to the line of scrimmage. The time in the weight room pays off right there, reaching out with one arm and bringing Papa Nicholas down. See who it was who got a piece of him. I think it might have been Chad Anderson. Just one hand. Yeah, I mean, Papa Nicholas was almost by him. Maybe Jared Prince also, he says. Either 57 or 8. Couldn't get a good look at the jersey, but nice one-handed tackle. Pepe Nichols was almost by him. Second and 11. They'll keep it on the ground. Guess who's back in the game? Shane Kojima. And again, he gets up limping. He's going to go back to the huddle, though, not to the sideline. Whatever's wrong with him, he is just going to try and play through it. Now, in this situation, well, nobody's come in now. We have seen players, both at the high school and college level in games, sneak back onto the field. Yeah. You know, they're not supposed to be there. Steve Young almost tried it, but he's staying out there. So whatever he's got, they figure he can't hurt it any worse, I guess. Oh, look at this kid. I mean, he is <laughs> struggling coming back to the line. I know, but you play all that. You get to the state title game. This is not the yeah. time to be looking for a seat. Third down, they need two. The pitch, first down. It's Jack Beck. Reese Stein is down on the sideline, and Reese, it's interesting to see Kojima back in the game. I don't know if he's done it on his own, but he looks like he can barely walk. Well, you know, on third and short, Fremont anticipated it was going to go to Kojima. They faked it to him up the middle, drew everybody inside, and don't you love the way Papa Nicholas pitches that ball? It's a crazy ball out there, the way it's flying through the I air. Know. That one worked and got the first down, but, man, that's a little scary. Well, it's been a disaster waiting to happen a couple of times. They have fumbled the ball, but... So far, Skyline hanging in there. Four wide receivers for Papa Nicholas. And behind him, the limping Kojima. They run a little inside reverse there. And Nick Hansen gets some good yardage. Seven yards. Yeah, Hansen looks like a big guy. He looks like a low, but he's got some speed, too. He was second in the state 100-meter dash last year. So as a track star, he's proven he has got some speed. When you're that big, you're just waiting for a chance to get beyond the line. Back. That combination of speed and strength, defensive backs do not want to see that guy bearing down on him. Well, and that's what that play's drawn up for. That little, uh, kind of a little reverse inside. You're hoping by the time he hits the line of scrimmage, there's some holes opened up, and that was the case there. Second down, Papa Nicholas pitch. And again, Jack Peck bowled over at the 18-yard line. <laughs> And another first down for Skyline as the Eagles continue to move. They lead it 3 0, five and a half to play in this first half, which has been marred by several turnovers. And now Fremont's going to take another timeout. That'll leave them with just one. We'll be back to Rice Stadium. The Eagles lead it 3 zip. I got a house on fire here. People up there, get me some help here now. What do we got? We have a boy upstairs corner. How are we gonna get somebody up there? There are people who in the course of an ordinary day do extraordinary things. Such is the courage of many firefighters, like the firefighters whose instruction enabled a boy to rescue his family from their burning house. It's Dave Wade and Paul Ellsworth and others like them who inspire the hero in each of us. First Security Bank, currently giving 110%. If you buy 1,000 chairs, you should get a better price. R.C. Willie thought so. We purchased 1,000 comfortable Lazy Boy rocker recliners in four beautiful colors. Each comes with Monsanto's two-year fabric warranty. Lazy Boy gave us special pricing. They're now on sale for $2.99. You'll save $100. Could it get any better? Buy one and get this handsome floor lamp absolutely free, a $60 value. Hurry, we only have 1,000. Nobody beats R.C. Willie. Nobody. Skyline up 3 0, but they're threatening once again in the state 5A football championship. The Eagles against the Silver Wolves of Fremont. Gus Papanicholas, the quarterback, and the give to the limping Shane Kojima. 
who drags just about the entire Fremont squad with him down to the 11-yard line. He is definitely limping coming back to the huddle. The only time he doesn't limp is when he's got the ball. Look at this. How many guys has he got hanging on him? There's one. Uh, so blocker drives a Senga guy off. Two guys. Six oh, guys man. finally riding him to the ground. Fremont knows they got a gang tackle. He gets five yards downfield. It's trouble. Four Again. wide receivers now for Papa Nicholas, and right behind him, Kojima. Papa Nicholas keeps and falls forward. He'll be about a yard shy. Well, Fremont is definitely back on their heels. The three turnovers, they finally stopped him on on downs and stopped that uh, fourth drive at the fifth possession, Skyline driving. But the first time they played, back in the season opener in August, Skyline led 21 to seven at the half. And you would think that with their grinded out offense, they could run clock there at home, they'd be in charge. Fremont aired it out and got back and won the game. Third down, they only need a yard, they spread it out. Kojima behind, but they pitch back to Nick Hanson. Light it, Reese Stein. I got him. That had to be a good looking view for you, Reese. Well, they were, they've been going right up the middle, and with Hansen in there with Kojima in the backfield, uh, it was pretty apparent they were going to fake it up the middle and then pitch it wide. It's worked all year. Uh, Hansen scored that way in the quarterfinals off that same play. This time, though, Fremont reacted beautifully and shut him down at the five, but they still get the first and goal just inside the five. Nice piece of running. The ball is on the four yard line. Skyline threatening to go in now, already up three zip. This ground attack has been punishing. Keep in mind, the football players you see on defense for Fremont are the same ones. they got to come out and play offense. There may have been a fumble in there. Another turnover. Reese, that was right in front of you. Number 66 for uh, the Timberwolves has been on just about every play defensively. That's Jadon Judkins was right there to pick up the loose ball uh, as the interior of the Fremont line did a good job of not only stopping but stripping. Four turnovers now for Skyline. This one inside the five. We'll see, does the ball come loose on the handoff? Yes, it does. The handoff is not clean. I think it's a little loose and then boom, there it is. It's on the ground. A bad handoff, a bad pitch. There was an interception mixed in, but an interception and three fumbles. It's just bizarre, the mistakes we've seen. And it's 3-0, 3 3.45 to go in the first half. They're going deep. Jake Ryan. Well, Bryant is a favorite receiver. Two big catches last week in the semifinal. And this is they just got him isolated on the far side. And if this ball is thrown a little more in play, who knows how far he might have gone, but they got him and just shoved him out of bounds. You know how tough that is to catch a ball like that when right you look at the top of the helmet? Yeah. yeah. 27 easy yards. First and 10, Olin Hannum in trouble. Throws it up for grabs, and it comes up big into the hands of Kurt Flinders. And Flinders has a first down. And I'm telling you right now, Olin Hannum, just did everything he could to get rid of that football. hes I don't know if he could tell. The screen was sold very well, so all the Skyline defensive linemen were way up in the backfield, but if anyone had a hint that was coming, that ball was in the air a long time. You can see here, the Skyline guys are coming. They are way upfield, and he just turns and heaves. He's got no time to get rid of it. Boy, uh, another guy slipping on. You know, hes he's had punts that didn't go that high. <laughs> Hannum, pass it, there's the pass, there's the flag. Oh, man. Oh, that was obvious. That was clearly passing yards. Now, I can tell you, broadcasting this game, you know, we, we like both these teams, and, and we're, you know, we're happy to see them here, but that was a play that should have been called in favor of Fremont. Watch the replay. Yeah, the All hands on over the helmet, space. no question. Absolutely and complete pass interference as Jake Bryant should have been able to at least have an opportunity to catch that ball and he wasn't. The refs are gonna miss calls though. You can't let that rattle, you just gotta go play through it. It's second and ten, doesn't matter wow. if they should have thrown it or not. Again, Hannum trying to get out of trouble. Look at him go. He's got open field. And Hannum crosses midfield and has a this Eagle 
defense has been giving him fits, but he's been coming up big. Remember, he had the other big run that ended in a fumble, but still, he's gotten him out of a few holes. You know, that's going to go down as a 12-yard gain, but count how far he runs on this. First, he's dropping back. There's five yards. He's 10 yards behind the line of scrimmage. Then he sprints 20, 25 yards to the near side. Then he turns upfield and runs 25 yards upfield. Olin Hannum, five carries, 33 yards. He ran for 50 yards on that play. Unbelievable. Out of the shotgun now. Hannum standing at his 50-yard line. That looked like a quarterback draw or a busted play, but did you see the yeah. eagle line get in there, a little blitzing? I mean, they just, they were there in a hurry. I think they only had five. I mean, they may have blitzed one guy. I think they had five men coming. But it looked like at least four out of the five guys got into the backfield and got off their blocks. Well, on the near side, that would be completely untouched. Yeah, nobody touched Sid Lott, the nope. guy who's only had ten sacks and three <laughs> block kicks this year. Yeah. Second down and 12. They lose a couple. And his pass complete. And busted out of one tackle is Flinders. And he'll be stopped about four yards shy of the first. You know, the, the previous play, Dave, watching the replay, looks more and more like that was a quarterback draw. I mean, you don't just leave Lot unblocked, but when he's lined up that wide on a quarterback draw, you can leave him unblocked. So that may have been a draw, and somebody in the middle may have ruined it. But uh, they do pick up some yardage there on second down on that short pass, so they got third and about uh, third and a little less than five. They have to go to just shy of the 35-yard line. And a player's just been sent off the field. Oh, there's blood on his arm, I believe. Officials took a timeout because one of the Silver Wolves, Jadon Junkins. Junkins, had blood on his arm. So he's going to have to leave for one play, and Dan Leak is going to step in there. Hannum to throw. Looking deep. all the way down to the three-yard line, and he had Ryan Smith harassing him the whole way. Yeah, but Fremont, Fremont may have just gotten open. Watch, Flinders had his hand out and was making a little contact. It's the kind of thing maybe you ought to let go, but I don't know. They may have just gotten that one back. Well, you can't see it. Nice catch by Flinders. That was Jared Brockman on defense. Uh, Ryan Smith, you see, he runs over there right behind him. Yep. Brockman on defense. And I guess played him about as good as he could, really. Yeah, Flinders may have gotten away with a little hand in the back at about the 20 or the 15. Yeah, 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 yeah. First and goal at the three. Adams pitch back. Flinders. He won't get much. Kyle Hansen, the first one there to trip him up. Boy, they are so big. Skyline is so big inside. You want to go outside, but those big guys are quick. Look at all the jerseys that are out there. You got four guys. They're not only big, they're quick, and they're running sideline to sideline. And you got to wonder if Skyline's going to try and run it in here, if they're going to try and throw it in. Reese, you're right down where this is happening, and Flinders has been busy for this team. Hey, I'll tell you what, he's a little guy, too, compared to everything, but boy, can he run and catch. He's done it all on this drive. 5'8", 150 pounds for the senior, second and goal. Hannum's going to throw. He's got a receiver just beyond the fingertips of Chris Lewis, the big tight end. He can't quite find him, and Lewis was open. And the Fremont coaches, two booths away from us here in the press box, just went nuts. I heard them pounding their table. Yeah. And then they turn around and look at the radio guys next to him. Uh, sorry about that. We're just a little fired up. Right off his hand. He got one hand on it. Hannum didn't uh, have a lot of touch on that. He really did sting that one in there. But when you're the receiver, you think, all receivers think, if I can touch it, I can catch it. If I can touch it, I can catch it. All good receivers think that way. They also all think they're open. That's true. That's another thing all good receivers think. Absolutely. Third and goal. Hannum's pass. Fakes once. Pumps. Throws into the end zone. Touchdown. Silver Wolves. for the touchdown. Sean Van Tassel with the touchdown catch, and he made this happen with a great fake inside, turned the defensive back inside on that pump fake, and then broke outside and was open. 
And that was the result of a really good inside move. He really sold it. I don't know if you get to see it, but this crowd on the Fremont side of Rice Stadium is going berserk right after they scored the touchdown. The group from Plain City. Plain City is on the mats as one of the sides. <laughs> that was an impressive drive. After the first three turnovers, they got no points, but they take a fumble and drive 97 yards for a touchdown. First points they get off the fourth Skyline turnover. Plain City is here. Watch, watch Van Tassel sell this move. He's looking inside. Boom, he breaks outside. He got the hips turned just a little bit on the defender, and he is open. Nice move. He knows one-on-one -on -one out there. There's no safety he's going to get out there and help you. You got one man to bait, and you turn him inside, and that's it. And Olin Hannum. You know, it's dangerous for some high school quarterbacks to throw all the way to the sideline. Great pump fake. Gets the defender in the air. But with his arm, defensive backs have no time to recover. When Van Tassel, he cradled that. There was no way he was going to drop that football. Look at that drive, 97 yards after the fumble recovery in 10 plays, three minutes. Would that be 9.7 yards a play? I don't know, I'll do the math later, Dave. Okay, get back to me on that, will you? <laughs> sure. Have your people call my people. Skyline's gonna have 58 seconds left in the first half. Now, we've seen them throw the ball effectively, I suspect whether they just kneel down and run out the clock here or run some dives up the middle or they air it out. That all depends on what they do with this return right here. And conversely, Fremont's got to decide, do we want to kick this ball away and risk a good return, or do we want to just dribble a knuckler down the middle of the field? Well, Papa Nicholas has only thrown for 17 yards so far in this game. They've uh, got that they, ground out They've game. been running the ball well. Skyline's only been stopped on downs once. They kicked the field goal. The other four positions are ended with turnover. So you can understand the play selection. And the Eagles will have the ball at the 29-yard line with 53 seconds with which to work. And just as importantly, Skyline has all three of their timeouts. Fremont burned a couple. That's not going to matter in this situation. But Skyline's got all their timeouts to work with. Gus Papanicola, 17 yards passing in the one interception. In the semis last week, in almost exactly this situation, he threw a 57-yard touchdown pass over the middle. Well, that pass is caught, but not for much. It's down at the 34-yard line. And I think they're going to take a timeout. I really think they have to. A short play like that didn't get them much, and the clock was running. They didn't even get the clock stopped to move the sticks. In the semis last week, we were in a scoreless tie with Highland. They have a great rivalry. It was an emotional game. Both teams were running a little bit, but not too effectively. And all of a sudden, Papa Nicholas drops back, hums one over the middle to Brockman, 57 yards and a touchdown. I mean, we've been talking about Olin Hannum, and, and he's certainly going to put up the better numbers at quarterback, but Skyline has made big plays with their passing game, and they don't have to throw deep. They've got guys who can catch and run. they got other guys who can catch, too. Hanson that just caught that one. Yep. I mean, that can throw. He's thrown. In fact, he threw for a two-point conversion earlier this season in an overtime win. They've got a lot of multi-talented athletes. You see the coach on the sideline there explaining to the officials how it should be. A couple of questionable calls on that last drive that may have evened each other out. Yeah. Yeah. But as you say, you can't worry about the refs. No, you can't. Talk to the NBA players about that. <laughs> I was going to say, these guys may miss some, but they're doing a better job than those replacement refs, right? It's great the way you can work those guys into any game, any sport, <laughs> any level. <laughs> Papa Nicholas is in trouble. And that might just about do it. For yeah. the half. But you know, that was a smart play down there. You can try and fight through a tackle and brush a guy off, but that's when you might turn the ball over. You drop back, you got three wolves, you can't go left, you can't go right. There's a guy coming right up the middle. Fall down, avoid the contact, no turnover. That's a smart percentage play. And, and I think Roger Dupe is happy just to kind of let this go. Ten seconds to go here in the first half. His team down seven to three. There's been a lot of mistakes. No sense throwing a little down and out that's picked off. And because six. it's only third down and they only have one timeout, Fremont can't stop the clock. Otherwise, they might have stopped the clock, forced the punt, see if they can get a bad snap or a block or something. But with one timeout, there's no point. Just let the clock run out. Well, we've come to halftime for the final state football championship of the season. It's the 5A title matchup between Fremont and Skyline. The Silver Wolves was a, with a 7-3 lead. 
We're going to take you back to the KUTV studios for a little news update. Second half coming up. The Utah High School Football Championships are brought to you in part by U.S. West Cellular. On the next Entertainment Tonight. I am sick of you telling me how I should live my life. The dramatic Whitney Houston scene you won't see anywhere else. I'd rather live alone than crawl up behind some two-timing loser. Then how alien autopsy is turning Hollywood stars into believers. And Superman's Lois Lane, Margot Kidder, breaks her silence about her good friend Christopher Reeve. Plus, Anna Nicole Smith, bigger, bolder, and more nude than ever. And we've got the Playboy picks that prove it on E.T. There's more to E.T. at 6.30. When it comes to recycling, everyone can make a difference, but we've got to recycle smart. Your Coca-Cola bottler reminds you that recycling plastic is easy. First, remove all lids and collars from plastic containers and rinse them out. Then, flatten to conserve space. Remember, only 2-liter bottles and milk and water containers are recycled locally. Call Utah Recycles to find out if curbside recycling is available in your area. Join your Coca-Cola bottler, Utah Recycles, and the Utah Soft Drink Association and help keep Utah beautiful. Together, Utah Recycles. Jerry Siner Midvale has GMC Trucks. We have one of the biggest selections of two-wheel and four-wheel drive full-size trucks, extended cabs, work trucks, and Sonomas. We even have the new, more powerful 96s. Plus, with our low prices and payments, we can find a vehicle to fit your needs and your budget. Just look at this GMC Jimmy, only $325 a month, or this extended cab discounted $2,100. We'll work hard for you at Jerry Siner Midvale, making friends to last a lifetime. 7200 South, east of I-15. George thinks he knows about fresh fish. He spends cold cash to sit in a cold boat drinking cold coffee. That's fun. Men are weird. I just come to Dan's. I get really fresh Market Street seafood, not just trout. And I always get my limit. Saturday only, get Market Street raw tiger shrimp at our lowest price this year, just $3.49 per pound. And certified Angus prime rib roast is just $4.99 per pound. And that's what I call a great deal. From Channel 2 in Salt Lake City, this is 2 News Special Edition. Good afternoon, everyone. We have big news breaking out of Washington today. Well, just six days after he vanished, the estranged husband of Utah Congresswoman Enid Waldholtz surrendered this morning. Joe Waldholtz turned himself in to Justice Department officials in Washington, D.C. He faces mounting questions in a $1.7 million check-kiting scheme. Waldholtz was moved from the Department of Justice to the federal building where he appeared in court late this afternoon. Earlier, when Congresswoman Waldholtz got word of Joe's surrender, she made a brief statement. Confidence in the Department of Justice and their ability to get to the bottom of the fraud and the deception that Joe perpetrated on my family, on his family, on me, on friends, and, and many others. I know that they are all hurt and sad as I am as we now try to comprehend what Joe's done. The Justice Department warrant issued on Wednesday sought Walt Holtz as a material witness in the fraud investigation. Walt Holtz appeared in federal court on that warrant this afternoon, and 2 News' Larry Warren was in the Washington courtroom. He joins us live on the telephone right now. Larry, tell us what happened at the hearing. Well, Terry, this was a hearing to decide what to do with him now because he's not really a, uh, charged with any crimes. He's not a fugitive from justice. He was wanted on an arrest warrant as a material witness. So there aren't any charges against him. And what they decided to do is to uh, release him in the custody of a friend who is also an attorney in Philadelphia. And we saw him uh, uh, whisked out of the courtroom about uh, 45 minutes ago, presumably on his way to Philadelphia. The name of the friend with whom he will be staying in Philadelphia is uh, sealed by the court, will not be revealed. So he has disappeared uh, in the direction of Philadelphia. He's been ordered by the court only to go to the following three cities, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, where his family is, and Washington, D.C., here, where he is wanted before the grand jury for testimony on next Wednesday. So the next time he will publicly surface will be next Wednesday at the uh, grand jury hearing, and, of course, those are closed pr secret proceedings. So he's not allowed, Larry, to come to Salt Lake City, his home. He, he is not allowed in 
any place but those three cities, and he is uh, under court order to appear before the judge back here in Washington Wednesday at 9.30 in the morning. There was at the court, uh, uh, Terry, some uh, revealing information about just where Joe went in these six days he's been missing. He he ditched, uh, uh, essentially, his wife and some attorneys at the Washington airport last Saturday, gave him the slip, but he didn't fly out anywhere. He probably uh, caught either the subway or or the uh, uh, a cab to the train station in Washington and took the train to Springfield, Massachusetts, spent two nights in a motel in Springfield, uh, took presumably another train to Philadelphia and spent the next two nights in a hotel in Philadelphia and then contacted a friend, this uh, gentleman who's the custodian for him at the moment, and spent the next two nights in Philadelphia at his house. He says he did not become aware that he was a fugitive or considered a fugitive uh, uh, with a warrant out for his arrest until he picked up USA Today yesterday morning. Uh, the lead story yesterday morning was, where's Joe Waldholtz? Uh, uh, so imagine the shock of, <laughs> if you had been out of touch, picking up the newspaper and seeing your name as the lead story in USA Today. At that point, he contacted uh, uh, he told his attorney friend in Philadelphia, what should I do? Uh, I need to turn myself in. Uh, uh, both sides agree that he did the right thing and uh, did make arrangements beginning uh, late yesterday to turn himself in this morning here in Washington. Okay, thank you very much. That's Larry Warren reporting on the phone live from Washington. Well, it is day four of the federal government shutdown, which is now the longest in history, and it appears the warring parties have only begun to fight. This afternoon, the Republican-led House passed a budget bill that would cut a trillion dollars in spending and balance the budget by 2002. That measure is now headed to the Senate. But President Clinton is poised to veto the bill because he says it contains a tax cut for the richest Americans. When this latest round of bill bashing is through, both sides are expected to get down to some serious negotiating. Well, the state of Arizona protested the closing of Grand Canyon National Park, but the Clinton administration ruled today that it has to close. Governor Fife Symington offered National Guard troops and state workers to run the tourist attraction during the federal budget shutdown, but Interior Department lawyers ruled today that the workers would be considered volunteers, and that is not allowed in a shutdown situation like this. Workers were at the park waiting for the decision so they could get the park services up and running if they were allowed. They were not. This is the first time the park has been shut down in its 76-year history. A metal detector has been installed and the counseling offices are full at Highland High School today. This comes after an argument between students yesterday that turned violent. The suspect went into the school with a shotgun after deliberately ramming his car into another student's car. The gun discharged, but fortunately no one was hurt. Parents today, though, are still outraged. A shooting could happen inside the high school. It's a good school, it's a good high school, and I've got a lot of people saying that's a great place to go. But I get a little bit concerned. When my kids get threatened at school, they come from an education, not to find fights. Maybe we have to resort to metal detectors. Whatever it takes, something's got to be done about this. Now, the school principal, Chuck Shackett, says that security has been beefed up. There are two additional Salt Lake City police officers on campus today, as well as officials from the Salt Lake Metro Gang Task Force. And he says some of the kids who associated with the two students involved have been asked to leave school now for their own protection. He says the counseling offices are also fully staffed and counselors have been seeing students all day. Principal Shackett also tells 2 News that many parents have kept their kids home from school today. When we come back, we'll get a check of our weather forecast. Stay with us. Larry H. Miller Toyota presents the Toyota Ride and Decide Challenge. Now's the time to test drive Toyota's top competitors to see how they match up against the Toyota Camry, Corolla, Tacoma, and 4Runner. Rev the engines, test the brakes, hit the accelerators. You can even kick the tires. We're so sure you'll prefer a Toyota over the competition that we'll let you test drive both at one location. We'll even give you a free pumpkin pie from JB's. Take the Toyota Ride and Decide Challenge today at Larry H. Miller Toyota. Whatever it takes! 
all a dollar in greenbacks, your partners in value. It's time to start planning for the holidays. For the month of November, all a dollar is having a holiday special you don't want to miss. Three 20 ounce bottles of Coca Cola for only one dollar. It's time to stock up for the holidays, but you'll need to hurry. This incredible deal will only be on until the first of December. Three 20 ounce bottles of Coke for only one dollar. It's the best deal in town. Stop by all a dollar in greenbacks for all your holiday party and gift needs, stocking stuffers, decorations, gift wrap, and more for only a dollar. All a dollar in greenbacks, your partners in value. Inkley's, Utah's largest camera dealer, is also Utah's only premier Pentax binocular dealer. We stock every model, including the smart compact Jupiter 7x20 model for just $59.99. We also carry a full line of Pentax compact zoom cameras, including the world's first full-featured weather-resistant zoom compact camera in an exclusive Inkley's kit. And this easy-to-use ultra-compact with zoom lens is just $149.99 at Inkley's. Inkley's, our everyday sale prices will save you money on Pentax cameras and binoculars. Wallpaper Warehouse brings you forever Christmas trees, the most lifelike trees on the market today. Their seven and a half foot mountain pine is 179. Their seven and a half foot noble fir is 129. Their seven and a half foot deluxe Bainbridge is 209. Their seven and a half foot Gunnison pine is 109. Their seven and a half foot Calgary pine is 149. And our seven and a half foot Colorado spruce is 119. Look for added coupon savings in the newspaper. Happy holidays from Wallpaper Warehouse. It's still great weather for football. Let's check with Sterling for a look at our weekend forecast. Sterling? Well, Mary, it looks like we're going to have a spectacular weather over the next couple of days. Right now, a very nice afternoon, 56 degrees uh, here at the two new studios, a little northwest breeze. We do have some high clouds, but it hasn't ruined the day, that's for sure. Uh, 30.24 is our pressure at the present time. Now, let me show you those high clouds on the satellite picture. Just a little band of high clouds. It's drifting across northern Utah right now. Not really associated with any storm system. However, there is a storm system moving into the Pacific Northwest. That'll bring some rain to Washington and Oregon. The tail end of this storm will be moving into Utah late Saturday night into Sunday. So we'll see some increasing clouds, maybe some breezy south winds to help scour out the valleys tomorrow. And temperatures should be fairly warm tomorrow as that storm system moves in from the west. Uh, unfortunately, it's not going to bring any precipitation to Utah, but it will definitely bring some cloudiness on Sunday, maybe, maybe even a few mountain snow showers. Of course, the big game tomorrow, temperature should be very nice down at uh, Cougar Stadium, 65 to 70, and up at Utah State University, temperature's a little bit cooler, and there will be increasing clouds throughout the day, so you'll lose a little bit of sunshine late in the day as that storm system starts to approach. Here's our five-day forecast. For the Wasatch Front, only 57 on Sunday, but that's still well above normal, mostly cloudy skies. And as I mentioned, there could be an isolated snow shower in the extreme northern part of the state. And it looks like we go back into a sunny pattern with a little bit cooler temperatures than what we've seen recently. And then for southern Utah, temperatures cooling into the 60s by the first part of the week. Mary and Terry? Sounds pretty good. Thank Can't you, complain. Sterling. Not bad at all. We'll send you back to the game now. And two news at 5 o'clock will not be seen this evening because of the game, naturally. But we will be back with more on the Wald Holt story at 6 o'clock. We hope you'll join us at 6 and see you then. Enjoy the game. With the poached pears steaming and the turkey ready for carving, the Bradley family is gathering once again to share a holiday meal. At a moment like this, they're not thinking about how they saved on the whole meal at Fred Meyer, and that's okay. The Bradleys can just keep on enjoying the foods they love, and we'll keep on bringing them to them. Great food at lower prices every day. You'll find it at Fred Meyer. Presenting the Young Automotive Team's Thanksgiving Sale. Hi, I'm Spencer Young. And hi, I'm Roger Young. Listen to this. Get a 96 Blazer, fully loaded, for only $2.95 a month. Or how about a 1996 Chevy S10 pickup, plus $12,064, now only $10,710. Get a 95 Geo Tracker, $12,990, or $207 a month. We'd like to thank you for choosing the Young Automotive Team to buy, lease, and service your cars, trucks, and vans. The Young Automotive Team, conveniently located between Salt Lake and Ogden, right here in Layton and Evanston. The last thing this planet needs is another goofy gadget taking up valuable space. Yeah. Must be why Proform invented the Space Saver Crosswalk. They don't call it Space Saver for nothing. <laughs> get it? Then get it.
taking up less space. Space Saver by Proform. And the sun is setting on the state football championship. We're down to our last title. And at halftime, Fremont 7-3 over Skyline in the state 5A championship. Let's go down on the field, uh, Reese Stein. I think Reese trying to hunt down Coach Monkers, and we'll do that in just a moment. He just, he, he just came out of the uh, locker room, and, and we'll see if we can get a comment from him. Blaine, what are you going to do second half? Uh, try to do the same thing we did the first half. Hold them to three, and we score seven more. <laughs> oh, you got to get a lot of uh, turnovers to do that. Yeah, uh, uh, Skyline kind of kind of uh, gave you a lot of opportunities. That's been real critical for them. They've turned it over down in the red zone a couple times. It's helped us out, and uh, we've been able to score one touchdown off it. Hopefully, we can do it again. What a spectacular 97-yard drive! Yeah, it was. We finally got things going there for a minute, and. Uh, but if we're fortunate enough, maybe we can do it again. All right. Fremont High School head coach Wayne Monker is getting ready for the second half here, David. The score of Fremont 7 and Skyline 3. All right. And uh, Coach Monker's 1993 championship he got out of Morgan. He coached there. Let's take a look at halftime stats then. And passing yards certainly are going to favor Fremont. And rushing yards are going to favor Skyline, as you would expect. But look at the turnover, six of them in this game. Well, the yardage is very close, only 17 total yards, but Skyline with the four turnovers, you think they were inside the five down at the three-yard line when they fumbled, they had a chance to go up 10-zip, and instead Fremont goes 97 yards the other way. The first three turnovers didn't hurt him, but that one changed the game. The time of possession, not very even, Dave. No penalties in this game, but there were two bad calls. Two non-calls. <laughs> yeah, two non-calls. One each way, though. Let's take a look at some of the highlights here. First of all, going deep here to set up the first touchdown, Owen Hannum. And a nice catch. And that was one of the non-calls. He might have got away with a little push in the back before he went up and made the catch. Could have been offensive pass interference. And then here's the only touchdown of the game. Hannum and Sean Van Tassel put a great fake on the defender, as you pointed out, hauled it in. Wraps up a 97-yard drive. Now, Skyline in the opener against Fremont had problems stopping Fremont. Fremont made some adjustments at halftime. They were trailing 21-7, and Fremont scored 18 unanswered points and went 25-21. Fremont shut down the Skyline offense in the second half, and they exploded offensively. So we'll see if the same thing happens. Although, the Skyline coaching staff has had a a little bit of experience in making adjustments at halftime of a playoff game. Oh, a little bit. They've got an amazing streak. Have they ever been in the postseason, Dave? <laughs> How was uh, that for a setup? That was, that was smooth, Dave. No one saw that coming. Since 1987, Skyline has either won the state championship or lost to the team that won the state championship. This is nine straight years, regardless of what happens now, nine straight years they've either won the title or lost to the eventual champion in the playoffs. It's quite a streak. Reese, you have some thoughts on that. Uh, I've got some thoughts on some schools that have already won state champions uh, this year. We've had four state football champions settled already. Of course, we had the 4A earlier today, Box Elder beating East. Earlier this year, Rich County won its second consecutive 1A. I misspoke earlier today when I said Grantsville won the 2A. Of course, Grantsville made it into the finals, but they lost to Millard in the 2A state championship game. The Millard Eagles winning that one. And uh, in the 3A, it was Delta upsetting the uh, undefeated number one ranked uh, team from uh, Pineview High School. Uh, some of the other state champions that have been settled this year in soccer, girls soccer, 5A went to Davis, 4A Olympus, 3A Dixie in girls volleyball, 5A American Fork, 4A Mountain Crest, 3A Delta, 2A Morgan, and 1A Rich County. The 1A Boys Baseball went to Wendover High School in cross country. The 5A Boys Bingham, Girls Mountain View, 4A Boys Tim View, Girls East. 3A Boys went to Lehigh, the Girls Cedar City. Uh, Dugway won both the uh, 2A uh, Boys and Girls, and the 1A Boys went to San Juan, the Girls to Monticello. In uh, Boys Golf, the 5A title to Viewmont, a 4A Spanish Fork, 3A went to Pineview. And in tennis, it was Brighton, Ogden, Dixie, and Grantsville. There's your state champions up until right now, David. Who won curling? <laughs> Yet to be played. It's a winter sport. Well, this kickoff brought to you by your Utah Intermountain GMC truck dealers as Fremont will kick it away, leading 7-3, to three, and we are set to begin the second half of football. Two of the winningest teams in postseason. Fremont, of course, in their first ever postseason. Nice return is on the way as Skyline will be set up with a terrific return from Jason Anderson. 
And Anderson all the way down. They're still on the sideline trying to unwrap some players over there. It looks like it's at the 41-yard line. One of them's still down. Well, the Skyline offense gets great field possession here, and there is a Skyline player down across the way, although we can't quite see who. He's clearly hurting a little bit. Looks like it might be Jason, Jason Anderson. Yeah, after that fine run, he uh, ran into the sidelines. And because he's so close to the sideline, they're going to stop play now until they get him over to the bench. See if we can see what happens to him at the end of the play. Went into the bench, so it may not be on the tackle. It may be as he slides. And he might have, maybe his left thigh or his left knee when he went down there. It looked like he started to tense up just as that hit the ground. And tough well, to see over there. helped him up now. And he is he, favoring a leg. It's, yep. it's clearly a leg. The, um, there's great field position for the Skyline offense yep. here. But when they got that field goal in the first half, that's the 108th consecutive game that they have scored in. The Eagles are now just two games short of the state record set by Highland between 1982 and 92. Highland went 110 games. Skyline, incidentally, shut Highland out in that streak. Skyline has now scored in 108 straight games. Next year, they can go for the record. And that'll have to wait till the second game of, uh, or third game of next year. And too much movement on the line in the first play of this second half. And they'll start again five yards back. That see if we can the see the movement in the line. penalty of this game, David. Yeah. Right guard. Jason Coolum moving a little early there. First penalty of the game. We didn't have too much in the first three quarters of the 4A game either, but then at the end, everyone went crazy. Shane Kojima sat out a little bit of the first half and actually even played some of the first half limping on that leg, but he's back. Papa Nicholas to throw. Fires downfield, and it's complete to Jack Peck at the 35-yard line, and there you see the versatility of that young man. Well, Peck is a, uh, is a four-star, four-sport star in addition to football, baseball, basketball, and wrestling. He tries to do the two winter sports together. This is a good throw here by Papa Nicholas. Watch, throws it hard, low, a little behind. No defender can get to that. That's either going to be complete or it's going to be incomplete. No chance of another turnover. You've got to keep it low in there. Don't risk the interception. There were a lot of defenders there. That's a good philosophy, though. That most passes are either complete or incomplete. That's the way. <laughs> the interceptions are the key play today. <laughs> Let me talk to you about turnovers. Let's go down to Reese Stein, Reese. Shane Kojima has his ankle really heavily taped. He uh, carried on the last one and got up a little slow, but it looks like they've, they've got that thing wrapped, and he's in there for, uh, for the duration anyway. He's a tough kid, obviously, as Papa Nicholas whispers something to him. And there's Kojima. Look at him. That kid is just a bull. Seven yards on first down. Got to love it. Breaking tackles. Impressive, impressive runner. Second down now, they need four. A little mix up of the line of scrimmage. Pat Nicholas, he may have the first down. You get used to them just running the option. Sometimes they've got the three. They've got the three guys behind Papa Nicholas in with just one back, but with three receivers split out wide. One of the receivers out wide comes back like he's running a reverse. And so just when you relax and think, hey, they've only got one back. We're going to see something very straightforward. No option here. Boom, they bring a guy in motion. He's in the backfield, and they surprise you at the last second. They're running the option again. You never know where they're coming from. And once again, Kojima tries the right side. It looks like he has the first down. And Skyline comes out with an impressive drive so far. And again, set up by a nice kickoff return. Even if he doesn't have the first down, well, he does. They're not even going to measure. He's got the first down. But that could have been four down territory anyway. So on third down, you know you can just bang him in there and then line him up and do it again if you have to. You know what's interesting, Reese? You made the comment that Kojima reminds you a little bit of Maafala for the Utes. And, and yet, just to show you the size of Maafala, he's a, another 50 pounds heavier than Kojima. And Kojima's huge. 
And he's wrapped up there. Well, relatively speaking, Kojima for a high school kid lifted at 215. That's a pretty big ball carrier for high school. But Skyline has always had a good power fullback. When they won a state championship, they've relied on that big power fullback to keep everything clogged up in the middle and allow the quarterback to either go outside or throw. Kojima's run for more than 1,000 yards this year, 1,013 yards. And he's having another big day today, despite the fact he's been limping almost from the get-go. Second and ten. Papa Nicholas. Fumble. Fumble. Another turnover. Fremont's got the football. Fremont has turned one into a touchdown. And we'll see if they can do it again. So Fremont takes over. Owen Hannum, the quarterback, already has one touchdown pass. Over 100 yards passing in that first half. He comes out rolling again. Pass is complete over the middle of the Flinders. Flinders wrapped up and a touchdown saving tackle at the 32. Nice open field tackle. And that was, was that Brockman I believe? Jared Brockman with a nice open field tackle. That is tough to do. He stands his ground. You'll see it here. Reese, I told you if you're on the sideline when Fremont has the ball, you're going to have to be moving. And you got to be moving now after this play. If nothing else, it's loud on the Fremont side. I can barely hear you. Brockman just staying low. That was a nice open field tackle. No pressure there. He's just got 30 yards to stand there and think, I got to save a touchdown. And I'm going to the end zone. Pass broken up, intended for Jake Bryan. But the pass is broken up, defensive backs for Skyline get there just in time. They got a set of twins back there, by the way. Number one is Nate Smith, number five, Ryan Smith. O'Brien caught a couple of balls for 41 yards in the first half, and he almost gets the touchdown. The ball was a little underthrown. Just a little. Second down and 10 from the shotgun. Owen Hannum, the rodeo star. A little bit of trouble there as the rush gets in, and Hannum is fortunate to get back to the line of scrimmage, which will bring up a third and long. We should mention, as Hannum does a little bit of scrambling back there today, that they just lost uh, Mike Hale to a knee injury, and he played both offensive and defensive tackle for him, so they've had to make some adjustments in their line. They've been healthy all year long, but Fremont uh, lost Hale last week, and that, that's hurt them in their line play, no question. And, 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 and Skyline's probably had a little something to do with it, too. <laughs> Third and 11 is what they'll call just past 10, and Hannum's going to have to take another timeout Remember in the first half, he had the same situation. 7.06 to play in the third quarter. Fremont is leading 7-3, and the Silver Wolves are threatening. Go where the rider is. All right, let's pick it up. First line, Mr. Andrews. I keep my drooping eyelids open wide, reaching out in darkness. Stand up. There are people who, in the course of an ordinary day, do extraordinary things. Look out there. Looks cold. Reach inside. Come on. Tell me what you feel here. Peace. Peace and what else? Shadows. Shadows that fill my soul and cry and search for the beauty that can't be seen. Such is the commitment of many teachers. I gotta get you out more often. Like the science teacher whose approach utilizes individual applications. It's Vern Bangeter and others like him who remind us that public education is also very personal. First Security Bank, currently giving 110%.
with a newly enhanced Vortec 4300 V6 engine and available push-button four-wheel drive, the GMC Jimmy can handle virtually anything you might encounter on the road. But you may appreciate Jimmy even more for its ability to get you out of your own driveway. Lease a new Jimmy for just $3.39 a month for 24 months at your Utah Intermountain GMC truck dealers now. 7-3 Fremont. Silverwolves trying to get into the end zone again. They're at the 33-yard line. They have a third and 10. Olin Hannum, number 12, the quarterback. Flag is down. And the pass is incomplete. There's another flag. Oh. So you're going to have pass interference at the 15, but probably some kind of hold or illegal motion or something back to 40. I'd be surprised if that was a hold on the first flag, and it's not. It's going to be illegal motion because they threw it so quickly after the snap. And it's going to be motion against Fremont and then pass interference against Skyline. So. I don't think on the replay. Eh, boy, that's a tough call. But see, he wasn't looking back at the ball, and that's probably why they made the call. Well, the net result is do over. <laughs> that's a highly technical term, Dave, but I believe I know what you mean. <laughs> okay. Third down, 11 yards. Owen Hannum, the quarterback's been playing well. Got a couple of wide receivers to the right, and there's where he's looking. Coming out of the backfield, Flinders. Flinders wrapped up and thrown down. Brian Karen with the tackle. I was talking to the Fremont coaching staff about this remarkable turnaround, or the remarkable start this program's gotten off to. Second year in the state title game. They were five and four in their first year last year, which is amazing enough. This is shocking. Asked him, how'd you do it? The response, um, I don't know, really. <laughs> Fremont is good just old, rolling. Good old country guy. On fourth down, the pass is complete, and Owen Haddam helps him once again. Barry Hadley, the reception. Let's go down to Reese, Reister. I'll tell you what happened. Jake Bryan cleared this whole side. He went deep. And then number three, Barry Hadley, just came across into the open zone and caught it for the first down. But the defense bit on the long pass to Bryan. It was a great play. Yeah, Hadley just snuck out of the backfield, as you say, and everybody else was looking, looking deep. And him from the shotgun, first and 10. Fires over the middle, wide open. Touchdown, Fremont. Smith was coming up from his safety position, and although he was not going to break up the pass, it looked like he was going to make the tackle inside the five, and he just falls down. You see him on the ground right there. I don't know what happened to him at about the five-yard line, but broken free for the touchdown. Boy, and Adam just drilled that in. Point after is good. The Silver Wolves, 14-3. This week, R.C. Willie gives you free jazz tickets with every Sealy mattress set purchased. Buy any twin or full-size set and get a free ticket. Buy a queen set and get two tickets. Buy a king-size set and get four tickets to an upcoming jazz game. Could it get any better? Every Sealy set is value-priced with prices starting as low as $119. Queen sets from just $399 and kings just $599 a set. Buy America's number one mattress at R.C. Willie sale prices and see the number one team in the NBA, the Utah Jazz. Nobody beats R.C. Willie. Who could harm a helpless child? Far too often in Utah, a parent or caregiver becomes so frustrated with their child that they shake them in a moment of uncontrolled anger. Shaking even once can kill or cause severe brain damage. If you find yourself losing control, get help. 
Let your partner or a trusted neighbor take over. Setting baby safely in the crib to cry so that you can walk away and calm down is okay. Take a moment and baby your baby. These guys are persistent. Well, they're no match for the world's first sport utility wagon. Oh, really? All wheel drive Subaru Outback's got more headroom than a Cherokee. Uh huh. The ground clearance of an Explorer. So you said. Ride smooth as any car. Got any more of those tidbits? One like more stability in a turn than a Chevy Blazer. Sure, that'll do. That's my Subaru Outback. World's first sport utility wagon. 14 to 3, Fremont over Skyline. Who's a Martin Short character? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's pumping up the new Steve yeah, Martin Ed movie. Grimley, Ed Grimley. Oh, Ed Grimley, okay. Yeah. Uh, you got hey, it. on that last drive, Fremont, Olin Hannum, four of five passes for 78 yards and a touchdown. That's some efficient football right there. Fremont High School, they got some spirit up there in Plain yeah. City, don't they? Got to shave it into your hair. That was Skyline's fifth turnover, and it led to a 77-yard six-play touchdown drive. So the first three times Skyline turned it over, Fremont didn't do anything. The last two Skyline turnovers have led to Fremont's two touchdowns. It's the reason Fremont's up 14-3. Turnovers have been the case today, and this kickoff brought to you by your Utah Intermountain GMC truck team. There's kind of a squibber that gets away and it'll be down at the 12-yard line by Ryan Smith. And here's another look from the R.C. Willie. Best seat in the house at that nice touchdown pass from Owen Hannum to put him up 14-3. Hannum going out of the shotgun. He's able to look right downfield right away, get rid of it in a hurry. Still don't know why the safety went down so easily. I guess he just slipped. I don't know. We've seen some of that on the... The thing you got to remember about the sports grass is they're playing on grass that's only like five months old. This is still very young and very immature grass. So you're going to see a little of that until next season. That's the angle for the RC really best seat in the house. Papa Nicholas brings his team back out trying to get something going. We mentioned this during the 4A game, but we were talking with... Uh, oh, oh another goodness. turnover! Another turnover! And Skyline High School is self-destructing. Boy, that, that was a late reaction even out of the Fremont bench. They didn't see it either. We'll see if we can pick it up here. He pulled the ball back, turns up field, and going for extra yards. He got it taken away. It wasn't a fumble as much as a takeaway. Yeah. Just grabbed it right out of his arms. That's why he never saw the loose ball. The ball was actually never loose. Took it, ripped it right out of his hands, and here comes Fremont again. Hannah back to pass. They're going for more. He's looking for Brian. He'll keep it. And Hannah will pick up a couple as Brian, Jake Brian, was well covered. Now the thing you got to watch is Hannah is a little slow to get up there. Olin Hannah has had a great year quarterbacking, but he's taken every snap this year. If he were to get hurt, Fremont High School has no one else with varsity quarterback experience. And you got to remember that when he starts smacking in the linemen and linebackers downfield. They have no one with varsity experience behind him. Play mockers are probably just soon having to throw that ball out of bounds. Yeah. <laughs> second down, he picked up a few. Second and six. Ryan and Van Tassel both in the end zone. Adams pass right through the hands of Van Tassel. He had a lot on that. It was only about a 15-yard pass, and it was a rocket. But we were talking earlier about uh, the possibility of interceptions and being careful with the ball. He's got great numbers there, but when a, once a ball hits an offensive receiver and it bounces up in the air, that is usually an interception waiting to happen. And this time, it carried him far enough back into the end zone. There was no one there. But that's a dangerous play, especially over the middle of the field. There's almost always somebody back playing center field. Well, he had so much heat on that ball. Yeah, he did. Third down and seven. Fremont has cashed in on the turnovers, and they're trying to do it again. Already leading 14 to three. Four receivers. Hannah with plenty of targets. Look into the corner of the end zone. Oh, just beyond the fingertips of Kurt Flinders. Everybody talks about pick plays, where two receivers cross and they try to rub their men off on each other. You can't use one of the offenses, re offensive receivers to set the pick, but they were trying to run the defenders into each other, and it worked. They created just a little space. Hannum waits for the pick to develop and then throws it. Oh! oh. 
Back to if you can touch it, you got to grab it. Granted, a little overthrown, he had to dive. But if you can touch it, you want to grab it. Big stop for Skyline, because even if they do make the field goal here, Skyline will still be within two possessions of tying this game up. So that was a huge stop for Skyline. So they'll kick the field goal instead. Reese, give it's us the up, call. And it's wide to the far side, no good. So that time, Skyline dodges a bullet. They had given away the football on another fumble. They've had, what, five turnovers today? But this time, they prevent Fremont from scoring. That could have been a crushing blow if they got another touchdown. That was, that was six turnovers, five fumbles and the interception. So six turnovers for Skyline. If that had been a touchdown, 21-3 late in the third, now Skyline's going to have problems grinding the ball down the field. But at 14-3, knowing they need two drives and knowing they have big play potential, even out of the option, they can still afford to run and play smash-mouth football. And remember, the downs have not been a problem for Skyline. It's been the turnovers. They're not getting stopped. They're not facing third and longs. Half a Nicholas to throw. He's got a wide-open receiver on the left side. Caught at the 35-yard line, Nick Hansen. All the way down to the 42. Hanson came out of the backfield and they lost track of him coming out. You see he was lined up to the left to the near side and they just, oh, it looks like the man covering may have slipped and fallen. And guess who made the tackle? Was that Flinders over there again? It was. It was Kurt Flinders. That guy's been busy. Fumble recovery and interception. Scored a touchdown, I think. But this whole team's busy. You look at you look at number 12, Owen Hannon. He's the quarterback, and right now he's playing middle linebacker. <laughs> How many quarterbacks play middle That's linebacker? <laughs> Quick screen inside, the little laser screen, and it works. Skyline had the right call at the right time. Brockman with the game, but that worked because the middle linebacker and the quarterback was blitzing. He ran right out of that area over the middle. He comes in on the blitz right up the middle, so the middle of the field is wide open. Perfect time for that call, and look at him tuck the ball away safely. My guess is on the sideline, they yeah. were just talking about protecting the ball and not having a sixth fumble. I'll bet there's been a little bit of that discussion all the way down inside the 40-yard line now is Skyline. Trying to get on the scoreboard. They have not scored a touchdown yet today. They got the one field goal. Play clock down to two seconds. They got to hurry. Kojima. A hole up the middle for Kojima. Down near the 20-yard line. And that's just what we were talking about. They can make big plays out. Whether it's the dive, the quarterback keeper, the, the pitch, anything. They can make a big play out of it, and they get another one there. First and 10, and they're running for a first down. Boy, he just steps over one man and just gets through the middle of the field. Kojima now 13 carries for 84 yards. And it didn't look like there was much of a hole there. Developed at the last second. Quick handoff to Kojima there. That play developed in a hurry and shut down just as quickly. He'll get a couple. I'll be interested to see if they go back to that, uh, that screen pass that you talked about, Dave, and see if they bring that back in, see if Fremont, if they can catch Fremont in a blitz again. You get so used to committing not just the, the, the down lineman and the linebacker. Sometimes you commit the seventh, the eighth guy to stop the option. Those plays are going to be very effective. There's not going to be a lot of help back down the middle of the field. Second down, nine. Gus Papanicholas, he's going to throw. Complete for a pickup of a couple, not much. Shane Kershaw made the catch and was immediately knocked out of bounds by Sean Van Tassel, the wide receiver. He caught the first touchdown pass. Sean Van Tassel caught the first one. Boy, these guys are busy. You know, if you love to play football, though, who cares? You know, there's college players that would love to play on both sides. And, gee, there's an NFL player down in Dallas that <laughs> likes kind to of play both ways. That. Well, you know, this is the time of the game when Skyline size and the fact that they've got separate offensive and defensive platoons. If they're going to wear Fremont down, this is about the time of the game. We're late in the third quarter. It may start showing up. Kojima. First down inside the 10. It'll be first and goal for Skyline. And they are open in holes. They're running between the tackles for really good yardage, and part of that may be the fatigue. Although the flip side of the coin, a coach will tell you, yeah, sometimes that might happen, but a state title game, these kids are 17 and 18, plus it's the adrenaline rush. I mean, you're in Rice Stadium. It's a big-time facility. You're playing for a state title. You ought to have the energy to make it 48 minutes. They run the gamut across that line in, in terms of size. Hobbs is 250. Then you got Edwards only 185. They got a first and goal now from the eight-yard line. 
Kojima again. He fights for a couple down to the six. Reese Stein is standing right in front of where this is happening, and, and Reese, it appears, they're just going to grind it out. I'll tell you, uh, they're not taking any chances on the fumbles. They're just giving it to Kojima and say, hang on and go for it. And he's a bull. He is fun to watch. And he does remind you more of Mafala all the time you watch him. He's just a, a monster in there, dragging tacklers with him. Reese, if they sweep left, hold your ground and take the hit. <laughs> we'll stay right here. Second and goal. Kojima again. Nothing. Ooh, third down and goal from the five. What are you going to do now? Well, sometimes in these situations, and they, and they just did on the play prior to this, they tend to run a little bit behind Brian Hobbs. He uh, he made dramatic improvement in their offense. He's uh, he's lined up in the left guard spot, six foot, two hundred fifty pound senior. Did some good work in the off season and. Uh, Really made himself into a better player. Cut almost a full half second off his 40-yard dash time. And he's a big guy at 250 pounds. Happen Nicholas keeps it, and he slipped. He slipped on the turf going around the right side. Boy, they've been running inside so much on that dive play on this drive, and this time he kept it. If he had not slipped, he probably He'd have been in. he was in. We'll take another look at it. We'll see. Personally, I bet on the fullback dive. <laughs> he was looking at it all the way. And so did they. Yeah, it would have been close. He might have made it, though. You're right. And now you got a fourth down and four. Well, the field goal would get you to 14-6. You'd still need a touchdown and a two. So they're just going to go and figure even if they don't make it, they leave Fremont backed up. Fourth and goal. Back to Nicholas. No. He did not get it. Reese, the Fremont defense, steps up again down there. Well, they were stacked up in the middle, expecting either Kojima or Papa Nicholas to keep. Uh, he made a nice fake to Kojima and a great move to get inside, but the linemen were there to close the hole quickly, and he fell a half, half a yard short, and it's first and goal from the 99-yard line for Fremont. But remember, they went 97 yards after a turnover earlier, so they can put together long drives. Yeah, I don't think they're too worried yet. Well, that time, as we watched Pat Nichols on the sideline, he followed Kojima through this. He faked the fullback dive, and then he followed him and used him as a lead blocker, and it got him inside the one, but no closer. 14-3, we come to the end of the third. Marie Callender's, where the pumpkin's perfect, the French apple's awesome. The pecans are plenty, the meringues marvelous, the crust a creation. At Marie Callender's, we've been making pies the old-fashioned way, baked fresh every day since 1947. Because at Marie Callender's, we know you just can't improve on perfection. Marie Callender's, your favorite pies and more. Introducing the amazing new forklift, the 25-pound dinner fork that doubles as a barbell. The forklift turns every meal into a calorie-burning workout. If you want to make all kinds of money, come up with a new home fitness craze. But until then, take care of the money you have with free checking from Washington Mutual. It's amazing, and it really works. The amazing forklift. Order now, and we'll include the really big spoon free. That's different. That's Washington Mutual. 14-3 as we head into the final quarter of the final state championship battle. Fremont has just taken over at the one-yard line as they have held Skyline for the second time today, by the way, inside the five. Now the, now the question is, can they get out of there? Well, let's see. The last time they were here, uh, they got out no of problem. There. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they when they were trapped last time, they threw the ball from their own three-yard line and threw about a 25, kind of a fade pattern out to the 30. But the problem with throwing down here is holding in the end zone, automatic safety. You give up two points and you got to give the ball away. All in hand of the quarterback, number 12. He's going to throw. He's throwing for Matt Tassel and it's under throw. Exact same play they ran last time, although Tassel was running out towards the 30 and the ball was uh, thrown closer to the 20. Third quarter numbers here. The rushing yards for Skyline look terrific, and the passing yards for Fremont looks great. And actually, Skyline's piled up more total yards, but yeah, look at that it, turnover call. Six turnovers for Skyline. 
amazingly, they still got a chance in this game. Down 14-3, their defense has made some awfully big plays to keep them, keep them within striking distance. Illegal motion play declined, so that's a half a yard penalty there. They rather would have second and if ten take, than yeah, so just first and ten and a half. Let it go. And it's second and ten. Still from inside the one yard line. And it looks like Hannum's changing the play right now as he turned to both his wide receivers. Hannum again to throw. Passes a little behind Kip Nielsen, but Hannum just did a nice job avoiding a sack. Hannum did a nice job there. He saw the big cushion out on the corner, so instead of uh, running the deeper fade route, they just ran a little something underneath. And when he had to pump fake to get out of the way of the lineman, his receivers had to move again. They'd stopped and fortunately slanted it back inside. Otherwise, that thing would have been intercepted. You know, one thing you got to love about white uniforms, you can see all the mud. Look at the grime. I mean, there's blood, there's dirt. You can tell these guys have been out smacking each other around. These guys have been playing full. Look at the helmets. That's, it's one of the worst things about AstroTurf. Obviously, the injuries, the players' health yeah, is number you, one. You want to see you the dirt. Get, exactly. You Third look down like and ten. The they don't want to be punting out of here. Hannum. Pass is complete, and it's that man, Jake Bryan. The passing game of the Silver Wolves comes up with another big play. That is such a dangerous, dangerous route. You're throwing the ball all the way across the field. If it's picked off, it's an easy touchdown, but with Hannum's arm, he gets it out there in a hurry, and Brian runs the pattern a little beyond the sticks. Perfect. You know, they got him listed at 5'11", Hannum, 170 pounds. He just, he seems taller than that to me. He certainly has great field vision. That ball kind of exploded a little bit. Jake Bryan unable to hang on to it. No football team has ever tried to mislead another team with heights and weights in a program, have they? <laughs> That's never happened. Well, football, how about any sport? Yeah. Carl Malone has weighed 256 pounds his entire <laughs> career. And I can tell you he's bigger than that. Second down, 10. Look at this formation. You got all kinds of receivers uh, lined up to the right and a tight end. He moves back inside. And another in motion to the left side. And delay of game. A little too, little too much trickery there. Well, that is a tricky formation. They had, the, they had trips to the right. They had three wide receivers to the right, one to the left. And you would think with three wide receivers to the right, that's the way they're going. A lot of times you run that formation solely so you can isolate a receiver and try and create a mismatch on the near side. All the defensive backs get pulled over to the three receivers on the right. The guy on the left is often the intended receiver when you see that formation. See the Niners run that all the time, and it's odd how Jerry Rice always ends up to the left. Oh, now and again you see some rookie try to get the spot, but number 80 clears things up in a hurry. Hannah back to throw. Going deep. And overthrows Kurt Flinders. It's going to be third and 15. Fremont High School, the Silver Wolves. They've only been playing for two years now, a new high school. And no team has ever won a state championship in its second year of existence, but Fremont trying to do that tonight. Coach Blaine Monker has done a fine job with this club, 14 and 8 in two years. Third and 15. Hannon's pass, he's looking long again. Brian was held up. Jake Bryan got held up at about the 30. They won't call anything, but he was held up, couldn't get down there, and Fremont's going to have to punt it away. Well, the Skyline coaches went offensive pass interference because once he got bumped and held up, he had two very clear pushes in the back right in front of the Skyline bench. They had to see it, and I guess the officials figured, hey, they were both giving it and getting it. I, boy, that was it. I mean, right at the end of the play, that was a clear shove in the back. Of course, the officials can say the ball just wasn't catchable, I suppose. But boy, Brian got frustrated well, he, with that. And, uh, he was clearly held up as well. So there have been a few no calls in this game, though. In terms of penalties, there hadn't been a, much, a lot said. A little more basketball mentality letting him play here. You know, Roger Dupay could really give you a look. <laughs> I've heard that. Oh, man. You speak as if you've gotten one. 
Olin Hannum from the end zone gets away a nice kick all the way back to the 50-yard line. Jason Anderson cuts it back, and he'll get to the 42 before he's brought down. So Skyline will take over, and again, they've got some good field position. We'll see if the Eagles can turn this into some points. nuts all day long. They brought a lot of them. They really did. This is a really good crowd. Great three crowd. months. Inside handoff to number two, Shane Kojima. Skyline just keeps pounding away, pounding away. You just wonder if they're going to hit some pay dirt here sooner or later. They've been working hard. Fourth championship game in six years for that team. And this is the ninth straight year that they're either going to win the championship or lose in the playoffs to the team that does. I mean, they're really setting the standard. Reverse oh. almost broken up. They'll get something out of this. Jared Brockman back to the line of scrimmage, but that, well, actually it'll be about two yards short, but that could have been disaster. Rick Corbridge was in the backfield and almost had a chance to grab that pitch out of the air. Corbridge right there. Be oh, he almost got to the ball. Brockman just cut him off. Let's run down to Reese Stein. Reese, yeah, I'll tell you what. Good concentration, good discipline by Fremont. They uh, stayed home, kept their position. As the uh, uh, running back came around the corner, there were two defenders right there waiting for him. They stayed in their positions and played that one beautifully. Uh, outstanding defense by Fremont. And it does require discipline to play that properly. They quickly spread the formation, and Jack Peck is open in the middle. Everybody went out to cover the receivers, and Peck just snuck right up, and a big gain down to the 17, 18 yard line. That was great touch by Papa Nicholas. There's a lot of room behind the linebackers in front of the safeties, and he just lobs the ball in there for the big game. If he tries to zing that ball in there, if he sees Peck open and just drills it, it gets batted down or intercepted, but he lobbed it in there with touch. He had a lot of room to work with. Nice pass. Skyline once again inside the red zone. This is where they've had trouble. First and 10. From the 19-yard line, half of Nicholas to throw again. Put a little too much and a little bit behind Matt Hansen. He needed some of that touch yeah, he had on the last one on that. Although he was also the one who realized the Skyline had 12 players on the field just before the snap. Papa Nicholas looked up, pointed at Shane Kershaw, and jerked his thumb and said, get off the field. We got 12 guys. They didn't need a penalty slowing them down here. And Kershaw went racing off. Smart play by Papa Nicholas to save him five yards. You know, he doesn't throw a lot, but he's very effective. Seven and nine, yeah, 102 right. yards. Very efficient passer so far. And his one interception was as good as a punt. It took Fremont down inside the 10. Again the throw, and that one he throws into the dirt looking he, for Nick Hansen. Oh, but he meant to. There was good coverage out there. Rick Corbridge took the angle away. If he'd thrown that ball accurately, it would have been picked off. Corbridge would have stepped in front of it. He was throwing it away when he threw it into the ground. And now Skyline is left with a third and 10 for the 19-yard line. So once again, they they just they use a great running game to get themselves into position, but they have stalled inside the red zone. And ironically, they've stalled with a couple of incomplete passes. They have not run since they picked up that last first down. Well, they've been pretty effective on third down, five of eight. Third and 10. Look out. Papa Nicholas is sacked. Rick Corbridge. Corbridge came untouched from the backside. Nobody touched him. Papa Nicholas didn't have a chance. And that takes him out of field goal. Watch, he'll be coming from the tops of the screen. Papa Nicholas drops back. He's not even set, and boom, there he is. This Fremont defense has just come up so big, especially inside that red zone, keeping Skyline out of the end zone, and the Eagles will have to punt it away. They are going to try it. Oh, they are. They're going to try it. It's going to be a long one. This could be 48, 48 yards. Rich Crutchfield, 48-yard field goal. It's long enough. He just barely got it. 
And Reese, you were standing right under the goalpost, and that looked like it cleared by about a foot. Oh, he had a foot, foot and a half. He uh, was perfect, though, right through the uprights. A beautiful kick. 14 to 6. Some nights, seems like you can only give about 60%, but there's, there has to be something inside you that tells you that, that I can play a little bit harder. And pretty soon you find that, that you think you're giving 100%, and then you tell yourself, I got to do something else if we're going to win this game. And uh, you can push yourself beyond even your own expectations. First Security Bank, currently giving 110%. He's stared eye to eye with 300-pound linemen. He's walked away from some of the hardest hits the NFL could dish out. But nothing in his pro football career could prepare him for this. It's the big one, Mervyn Super Sale. Now bigger than ever with tremendous savings nearly everywhere you look. Save on all fine jewelry, fashions for your home, and clothing and shoes for your entire family. But hurry. Now that was a rush. Mervyn Super Sale ends Sunday. Trucks and more trucks. It's 4x4 time, and we've just received a special allocation of nearly 300 pickups, Blazers, Tahoes, and Suburbans. They had the best price in town on anything. Just look at this new pickup, discounted $2,300, or this Blazer, only $289 a month. For more than even the pricing, it was just how I was treated here at Jerry Siner. It's truck time at Jerry Siner Salt Lake. We're making more than great deals. We're making friends to last a lifetime. A fire in the sky, Fremont, 14 to 6 over Skyline, 8.20 to play in the state 5A football championship from Rice Stadium. Skyline finally gets some more points, 14 to 6 though, and they got some work to do. You wonder if they maybe should have kicked the field goal earlier, be 14 to 9 right now. Well, even at 14 to 6 though, they've gotten themselves to the point now with the touchdown and the two-point conversion, they could tie the game up. So that field goal was crucial. It got him back so that one possession, they could tie this game. And of course, Fremont doesn't run the ball well. It's hard for them to run clock. They've hardly run the ball at all. Yeah. Van Tassel. Sean Van Tassel tripped up at the 19 yard line. Fremont will take over there. Nate Smith with the tackle. Van Tassel almost got outside, but Smith tripped him up, grabbed the ankle. There's the field goal again. The special teams have worked wonders for Skyline. They won on a late field goal with three seconds left to beat Hunter in the quarterfinals. And now the 48-yarder just gets over. And it's 14-6. Fremont comes out. Owen Hanneman at quarterback. The pitch back. The flags everywhere as Kurt Flinders is dragged down after he picks up a couple. Just to illustrate how painful the red zone's been for the skyline, they went fumble, field goal, fumble, fumble, and then turnover on downs in yeah, five possessions. A fumble at the Fremont 7, a fumble at the Unreal. Fremont 9, a fumble at the Fremont 4, a fumble at the Fremont 20, and then downs at the Fremont 1. Been tough. Right here, I didn't see the penalty at the end of the play, although it's going to be against Fremont, going to back him up. Yeah, Skyline's had a lot of opportunities. You think, I mean, you were talking about the downs, how they could have kicked the field goal. You look at that, that's five possessions right there. If they get three field goals on those five possessions, they're up 15-14 Yep, right they're now. in good shape. Illegal use of hands against Fremont. Fremont's backed up at their own 10-yard line, but as we've noted, they've gotten out of a very bad field position and scored before. Had a 97-yard touchdown drive earlier today. Actually, the last possession was the only one they weren't able to get yeah. out. And there's one reason why. Number 12 plays quarterback and linebacker. Which is, you know, when you think about it, it's incredible. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine yeah. Dan Marino lining up at linebacker? Hand him to throw. He's got a receiver open at the 20-yard line. And another flag down back to the 20. But it's clear over on the other side of the field. Barry Hadley made the catch. This will be an it's interesting in the, call back over on the other side. It's back in the secondary. It's, a, it's The flag was thrown from about 15 yards beyond the line of scrimmage. 
with a crossing route wide open. It looks like this is going against Greenlaw again. You know, I, illegal use of the hands, which means it could have been either an illegal block in the back, or it could have been a receiver trying to free himself and on his break pushing off. A move made famous by Kellen Winslow, later perfected by Todd Christensen. How do we always manage to work the Chargers into these broadcasts? And Todd Christensen's a writer. I love the whole thing. They play the, the Chargers a lot. Okay, yeah, well, you got me there, Dave. <laughs> The important thing here is it's now second and 25 for Fremont, and they're backed up at their own five. Now, the first two times these teams met, met, Skyline did pick off a pass and run it back for a touchdown. And you, you got to wonder if their D can come up with a big play right now. Second down and 25. right where he needed to be for the first down and he'll get it he falls forward big play for Kurt Flinders and it was almost a big play for Skyline watch the replay Lance Sorensen number 90 who had the interception return for a touchdown in the opener against Fremont almost steps in right there to get the ball but when he can't get the interception Flinders is free to turn up field seven catches 137 yards but Sorensen was almost in the lane and almost had the pick in the TD Reese Hannah, what a great job he did. He crafted that play. He saw the defense. He moved everybody, told him exactly what was going to happen, then pulled it off. And then he got popped right after he threw it. A pitch back to Flinders. Cuts it inside and won't get much. Now you see why. And who's blocked it? Who's blocked did Flinders cut in behind? Oh, Olin Hannum. He doesn't care. He plays everything. Hannum's a linebacker. The He's man punts. The man punts, the man plays linebacker, the man quarterbacks. But he he made the pitch and then he turned up field and laid a lick. And Flanders cuts in behind him. Well, this kid's uh, he's a rodeo star, you know. Anybody that'll ride bulls and horses has got to be tough. Yeah. At that point, what's one more block, right? <laughs> Fremont continues to move. The clock continues to run. 5.50 to play in this, the 5A football championship. protection this time firing down the sideline and just beyond the fingertips of Barry Hadley well the ball was overthrown but when your hand is thinking I'm about to get hit I got to put something on this because if he overthrows this look at the skyline defenders this is what Hannah's seen he's I got to clear those defenders I might get hit here I got to put a little extra on it because I don't want the turnover Better to throw a little too far and have the incompletion. Yeah. Although it does stop the clock. This just isn't an offense that's going to grind out the clock at the end of the game. In the semis last week, Skyline was trying to protect a 14-7 lead. Their offense ran five and a half minutes off the clock at the end of the game. Never gave the ball back. Fremont's offense just isn't built that way. Well, they need nine yards here just to get a first. Yeah, but their offense is built to convert on third and nine. Yep. Adam pumps once. He will be stopped just short. It's all going to depend on where that official on the far sideline spots it. Now, the one at the 40-yard line they see further in, he's got him at about the 40 and a half, which would be half a yard short. Hannum dove forward and put the ball on the ground, and, of course, the ground can't cause a fumble. So he was trying to get every foot he possibly could, although he lost. Right here, he's going to run just out of the grasp of Kyle Hansen. He's too big and too strong to get dragged down by a shirt tail, and then, boom, the ball goes out. Oh, he was close. And he might have been, well, no, it doesn't. He had to go to the 41. It looked like the ball went down about the 40 and a half. Maybe a foot forward of the spot, but he's about two feet short of the of the marker. So Fourth and one, leading 14 to six. Clock moving with five minutes. You can't go here. You got to kick I, I, I can't believe you'd go for it, unless what they're going to do is just take the delay penalty and try and draw him offside. Well, they're going to run some clock. They just stood back there and ran the play clock down to take some time off the clock and get the game clock down to 4 minutes and 50 seconds. Now they'll take the time out and discuss whether to uh, gamble or not. Fremont leading, trying to protect the lead and hang on to the 5A championship title. With a newly enhanced Vortec 4300 V6 engine and available push-button four-wheel drive, 
the GMC Jimmy can handle virtually anything you might encounter on the road. But you may appreciate Jimmy even more for its ability to get you out of your own driveway. Lease a new Jimmy for just $3.39 a month for 24 months at your Utah Intermountain GMC truck dealers now. When it comes to beautiful things for your home, nobody beats RC Willie. Get ready for the holidays this weekend with this casual sofa and love seat, $6.99 for both. For that big Thanksgiving dinner, seat your guests at your new dining room table from RC Willie. With dozens of styles to choose from, there's something for every taste and every budget. Carve your Thanksgiving turkey with this electric carving knife free with any purchase over $2.99. Instant credit, Utah's lowest prices, no payment until March, free delivery, and a free gift. Nobody beats RC Willie. Hungry? Really hungry? Well, how does all the tender beef ribs you can eat sound? Sounds like Sizzler. Announcing Sizzler's all-you-can-eat barbecue beef ribs and salad bar for just $7.99. Get all the hearty beef ribs you want smothered in thick, rich barbecue sauce. And take as many trips to Sizzler's famous salad bar as you like, all for just $7.99. Sizzler's all-you-can-eat barbecue beef ribs and salad bar. Sounds like Sizzler. Sounds like fun. A uh, beautiful sunset in Salt Lake City. Kind of makes you feel like you're in Arizona or something there, that pitcher. 14 to 6, Fremont leading skyline. They got 450 to go to preserve this title, and they are going to go for it on fourth and one. Or at least, as you pointed out, they're going to try and draw them offside at their own 40 yard line. And they have not run the ball well today. Nope. Close. They're going to mark him a little short of the 40. You know, you pointed out they haven't run the ball well today, and yet they've passed with great success. I might have faked a little run there and thrown a quick out or something. Skyline's going to take over at the 40-yard line. And, you know, a, a touchdown and a two-point conversion ties this game. Could be looking at overtime. Well, the Skyline offense has come through in the clutch two weeks in a row. In the quarterfinals against Hunter, they gave up a touchdown with a minute left. Skyline drove the length of the field to kick the winning field goal with three seconds left. A classic one-minute drill drive. Last week, they ran five and a half minutes off the clock to preserve a 14-7 win. Half a Nicholas. There's a flag. That's, That's a good call. Be a flag. Jim Black was popped just, just before the ball got there. That's a good call. Now, the contact was definitely there before the ball. Reese, you were right down in front of that. It looked to me like pass interference. Oh, definitely pass interference, Dave. He was there way too soon. The, uh, the pass receiver just ran right into him long before the ball got there. No yeah, question. no question. But well, that'll help. By the way, Jim Black, when he wants to grow up, wants to be a TV sportscaster. Come on up, Jimmy. Oh, yeah, we need more competition. Um, Jim, you ought to reconsider that. Put a headset on him. First and 10 for the 25-yard line. Half and Nicholas, quick pass inside. It's complete. Garrett Brackman. Touchdown. Flag down. Flag down back at the 28. This could be coming back. The Skyline crowd is going nuts, but there's a hanky back at the 28-yard line on the far hash mark. Boy, Utah fans are having flashbacks right now as the Skyline coaches talk about what play to run for the two-point conversion. The refs are saying, rush the passer. Roughing the passer, Papa Nicholas must have taken a late hit. And now Skyline's got to decide what play to run for a two-point conversion. There's the screen as he cuts inside underneath and right there. Nice move. Oh, and look who he slipped away oh, from. Man. Olin Hannum. Hannum oh. has made so many big plays today, too, but he couldn't make that tackle. You see it again. Hannum dropped back. Then he comes back up after he sees the screen and right there. Nice job by Brockman to get away from him. Brockman, by the way, you know, a lot of kids want to go to Utah. A lot of kids want to go to BYU. 
Here's some words that will put a smile on the coach, on the face of Coach John L. Smith. Brooklyn wants to go to USU, wants to be an Aggie. Play for the Aggies up there. John L. Smith's going to build quite a little program. Now, this is an interesting situation right here. In overtime in the regular season, Skyline trailed Davis 21-20 after a touchdown. They went for two. They ran an option pass. They're running the option. The guy takes the pitch, pulls up, boom, throws the game-winning two-point conversion. That's the one Nick Hansen threw. Exactly. So, we know they can do that. Although that was a big game, it was a big play. It was shown on TV by almost everyone in the Valley, and my guess is Fremont knows about it. So it'll be interesting to see what Skyline uses here. They've been very effective running it right up the gut with Kojima, although the ball's at the three-yard line. That's a long way to go, running between the tackles. 14-3 to was the score, but Skyline has just continued to work their way into that. Now they're in position to tie up this ball game. This is the third straight game that the Skyline offense has come up with a big-time fourth-quarter drive. Three playoff games in a row. The offense has come through in a big way. Happen Nicholas. Try to run it himself. Got it. so close to you it looked like he might have made the tackle boy i'll tell you i wasn't going anywhere on that one what a great play papa nickel rolled out looking to pass and then just kept it kept his eye on this right here this is what he was going for and he knew that he was in the right place and he got the set, uh, two points and we're all tied up 14 14 dave he knows the rules. He knew the ball had to break the plane, and he just committed. He went airborne and stretched out with the ball and got there. Great effort. Let's take a look at that again. Papanicolas. Uh, defensive, defensive coordinators always talk about containment, and there is none. Papanicolas gets outside, and then it's the foot race for the corner, and he'll go airborne and put the ball in the corner. Nice Boy. effort. In the quarterfinals, effort. they drive the length of the field goal in a minute for the winning field goal with three seconds left. Up 14-7 in the semifinals. They run the last five and a half minutes off the clock and never give the ball back to Highland and win the game. And now here, they drive after this fourth and one, the stop by the D. Skyline goes 40 yards for the touchdown and the game tied two-point conversion. If I'm Fremont, I do not want to give the ball back to the Skyline offense with two minutes nope. to go in the game because they'll go do it. Here's the run. I think from this angle, you'll really see him stretching out to get to the corner. Boom! Ball in the corner. He's got it. Oh, look at him. Just look at him. The arms up to the crowd. Gus Papanicholas. A, a nice dive for the two. We're tied up. 4.17 to go in this game. And this kickoff brought to you by your Utah Intermountain GMC truck dealers. And Fremont will come out to the 20-yard line. We talked earlier about the possibility that perhaps the Silver Wolves could wear down a little bit. These players go both sides. They play defense and offense, just about all of them. And Skyline's got fresh legs with every possession. Skyline does have almost completely separate offensive and defensive platoons, but at the same time, Fremont's a big play offense in the second half last week in their semifinal game against Bountiful. They threw a couple long passes late in the game, made some big plays, and got the 13-9 win over Bountiful in a game that I think was scoreless going to the fourth yep. quarter. They put 13 points on the board in the last period. Owen Hanna. Ooh, oh. man, that pass almost intercepted very close as Isaac Bills got the big hand up. Isaac Bill's dad played on the title teams back in 1969 and 70 and went on to play at the U, so that family's had some football success. Second down and 10. of a ball that was really just hung up there. Anybody could have got to that. When you
you watch the replay, the fundamentals here are less than spectacular. He doesn't plant and throw. He's jumping backwards as he throws, and it tells you how strong his arm is. And coaches will tell you, yeah, we want the fundamentals, but we need players to make big plays with a game on the line. That's a 25-yard gain with four minutes left in the state title game. He just made it happen. It wasn't pretty, but he made the big play and got the first down. It wasn't anything close to pretty, but what a play. Two receptions for Nielsen today. One was for a touchdown. The Silver Wolves on the drive. 3.40 to go in this game. We are tied up. Blitz is on. Quick pass over the middle. It is caught. Van Tassel. Getting the tackler, perfect time to run that play. You'll see Skyline blitzing. Their commitment looked like six or seven guys up the middle, dropping right over them, and boom, here goes Van Tassel. And watch him when he cuts outside, runs right out of a tackle, and then he's gonna go out of bounds, stop the clock with another first down. And actually, with 3.32 to go, they're down at the Skyline 34. They don't really need to work, worry about working nope. the sideline. This isn't really a two-minute drill here. Not they got three and a half minutes to go 34 yards. They don't want to leave Skyline much clock. Hannum's pass complete on the right side. It's Flinders and Flinders all the way down to the eight-yard line, and the Fremont offense has come to life. But they're moving in a hurry. Now you can't get upset with that. He had open ground and he just started covering it, but Skyline's going to get the ball back with a lot of time. Boy, Hannum, he's had, he's had pretty poor protection at times, but the line did a great job there. And Flinders, look at him shedding another tackler. He's thrown to the ground. Hannum has just been masterful on this drive, and the fans are loving it. 300 yards passing so far tonight for Olin Hannum. This game was a little sloppy with some turnovers early, but this is a great fourth quarter. Blender will actually lose a couple there. The clock will keep running. All right, so every single play doesn't work. But this has been a pretty impressive drive. At the same time, that's not necessarily a bad play. You're in field goal range. The field goal can snap the tie, give you the win. Plus, he's tackled inbounds. The clock is moving. We're now under three minutes. If you can run the clock down a little bit, it might start to take the dive play away from Skyline. Yep. And that would be big because Skyline will, without question, get the ball back. At the same time, Skyline can turn the dive play into a big play. <laughs> so you may not really be taking it away. That's going to be delay a game. The play clock ran out. They're going to be pushed back to the 14, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because it gives the receivers more room to run their routes. They can't get a first down either. They need the touchdown. The yeah. ball's just inside the 10. It was originally first and goal at the 8. So this will be second and goal just inside the 15-yard line. I believe the coach would like him to get in the game. <laughs> Second and goal from the 15. Black Hannum. There is a flag down back at the 20. They'll yes. drag Hannum down at the 12. It went down right at the snap, and they didn't blow the play dead. This may be against Skyline. It may give uh, Fremont five yards and another crack at second down. Nope, illegal motion against Fremont. Never mind. Once again, Fremont moving back. Now, here's the key. you got to remember you're dealing with high school kickers here. You might, you might be moving back where the field goal becomes a shaky proposition. This moves you all the way back to the 19. The ball would be spotted at the 26. Now you're looking at a 36-yard field goal. Of course, it's also only second down, so they got a chance to get some of this yardage back. Third down is what it's going to leave them with, and they'll decline it. Skyline coaches are thinking we don't want to let them have the ball and yep. run some clock on us. That must be their thinking. Well, third and goal from the 13-yard line. It's 
fourth and goal at the 23. This will be a 40-yard field goal if Fremont chooses to attempt it. The good news for Fremont, the ball's in the middle of the field. The good news for Skyline, it was first and goal at the 8, and you pushed him back to the 23. Great stand by a defense that really got pushed right down the field. No question, you got to kick the field goal here. Can't be going forward on fourth and goal from the 23. Not a high percentage call no. there. At the same time, two minutes to go. A 40-yard field goal in high school is a pretty good boot. Yeah, That's we it. haven't seen one that long in a couple of minutes. Yeah, that was done by Skyline. <laughs> we'll see. Let's go down to Reese Stein. Reese. Well, I'm standing right behind the goalposts, and I'm just reminded that the goalposts in college are a lot skinnier than they are in high school. These kids are used to uh, kicking or looking at the uh, wider goalposts, and right here they've got the narrow goalposts. Skyline lost the state championship when they missed a field goal a few years ago. It's going to be 41, Dave. They're going to spot this ball back at the 31. 41 yards with a little bit of wind, but not much. Tyson Crayford. Not even close. It's good kick to the back is not even close. Yep. May have been tipped at the line. I don't know. But that wasn't close. So now Skyline for the third straight week. They drive against the clock for the wow. line. Wow. Their offense. And their offense is three for three under pressure the last three weeks. And they really didn't. They really weren't tested in several games before that. So. So the so Eagles will take over at the 20-yard line. That kick wasn't even close. Nope. One minute, 59 seconds to play. We're tied up at Skyline High School behind Gus Papanicholas. A lot of experience. Well, we may be looking at overtime now. 80 yards for Skyline. I don't think they want to gamble with a turnover down here. What's amazing is Skyline, if you joined us late, Skyline has overcome six turnovers today. Five fumbles and an interception. And I don't think they're going to do anything too risky backed up at their own 20. Although if they break one of these dive plays, if they get a little yardage, they can throw the ball. They can make the big play happen. Second down. Half a Nicholas keeps. Half a Nicholas. And a fumble, the ball's loose. And Skyline retains possession. As if this game hasn't had a little of everything already. Skyline has already turned the ball over six times. Papa Nicholas, just a great individual effort. Great open field running, but look at him swinging the ball around. And from behind, oh, he didn't even get hit. It just, he got tripped up and didn't expect it. And back to live action, they make the stop. But that ball was touched by about three guys who were laying on the ground. Both teams had a shot at it. That was just the state championship rolling around at midfield, Dave. One minute to go. We're tied up. If we go into overtime, Reese, explain how it's played. What they'll do is they'll line up on the 10-yard line, and they'll give each team four downs to score. The first team will have its four downs. If it should score a touchdown and an extra point, they'll give them the seven points and give the ball to the other team at the 10-yard line. They'll have four downs. If they score a touchdown, they have the option of going for two to win or one to tie and send it into a second and overtime so it's four downs from the 10-yard line for each team a little bit like a shootout in soccer in a lot of respects it is yes but there's a lot of strategy if we do get to overtime and we may not because skylines now across midfield with a minute to go they pick up another 15 20 yards they could be trying a game-winning field goal here in regulation but in overtime the team that has the ball first is under a lot of pressure because if they do face a fourth down do you kick the three if you hold the yeah. other time, the th if you hold the other team, right. the field goal wins. But if you kick the three and give up the touchdown, it's over and you lose. A lot of pressure from that first team if they get the fourth down. It can be a tough call. As I said, Skyline's got a minute left with the Fremont 44. Pat and Nicholas's big run has given them a chance to win it in regulation. Pat and Nicholas to the air. Passed on a little bit behind Matt Hansen. Was running. I don't think he saw that ball come out of out of uh, Papa Nicholas's hand. The ball was on the way before he turned. Yeah. 
That stops the clock with 56 seconds to go. It's important to remember here, Skyline only has one timeout, and Fremont has none. So Skyline wants to save that last time out to get their field goal team out there and maybe get a chance to win this. Right now they need to get a first down. It's third and eight. Tampa Nicholas. Throws that ball out, almost intercepted. He just hung it up there. Now you've got a fourth down and eight. This, 50 seconds to go. This, do you punt and settle for overtime or do you go for it? You know, ironically, this would be a 61-yard field goal, and we were just talking. The Utah <laughs> the record, State record yeah. is 60 yards. I don't think so. I don't think so either. Need a little better win than this before you try something like that. Look at Kurt you, Flinders there. That kid has worked today. The uniform is filthy just the way well, you like it. He's the one who almost had a chance at interception there, and he's yeah. already got a fumble and an interception recovery and about a half dozen catches for more than 100 yards. They're going to punt it away. And presumably with the idea of holding uh, Fremont, at least not giving them enough time to do anything with it. And settling for overtime, that kick's almost straight up. Good bounce for Skyline, great bounce. All the way down to the seven yard line. That's well, the first Skyline punt of the game. So you've got 38 seconds and Fremont Fremont will probably just kneel down and run out the clock. Skyline's only got one timeout, so if Fremont kneels down a couple times, we'll be into overtime. Shane Kojima, of all people, punting the ball. Clock is running, so clearly Fremont is not going to try to score here. They'll put the knee down, they'll settle for overtime, and they'll decide it with four plays from the 10-yard line each. They're going to let this one go. <laughs> what an evening it's been in the state championship. The 5A football title will be decided in overtime. There's a view of the press box, and it's probably getting a little chilly up there. <laughs> There's Todd Marshall. Wave to us. There you go. Are you kidding Todd this airtime? No <laughs> way. Not going to happen. <laughs> so 14 to 14 is where we're at. But you can wipe that off because we're going to overtime. The Skyline Eagles have fought back. It was 14 to 3 just a few minutes ago, but this just seems to be a team of destiny. Let's take you down on the sidelines where Reese Stein is standing by. And Reese, any uh, thoughts or predictions as we head into the overtime and who has the advantage and what's going to happen here? Well, the Skyline coaching staff, of course, they've had the advantage all along. They've been here so many times. But Skyline has also been in a state championship game in overtime. They missed an extra point that would have won it. They went into the overtime and missed a field goal that would have won it in the overtime, and they lost the state championship to Tempe. So Skyline knows what it's like to play on this turf in the state championship game in, in an extra period. Of course, Fremont doesn't know anything. They just know they're a good football team, and they're going to do everything they can to win it. And what a great game. Boy, would you want to be anywhere else at 5.30 at night on a Friday than the state championship game with it all tied up and going overtime. Absolutely it's not. It's wonderful. And a great crowd, and they've been well entertained tonight out at Rice Stadium. And people wonder why we call Reese Stein. People wonder why we call Reese Stein the guru. I mean, if you ever had any questions. The man knows everything. He does. He remembers the exact game. He knows right where he was sitting when that happened, too. Now, we're going to have a three-minute intermission here, so both coaches have a chance to talk to their teams. And both teams get one timeout to work with. Neither team... Now, will Skyline get an additional timeout? They have one left over. Each team has one. So both teams will have one timeout. Skyline had one left in regulation. Okay, we've just been told you get to add one timeout. So Skyline will have two timeouts to work with. If they need to stop and talk things over, Fremont will have one to work with. We're going to have a coin flip here in a second that will decide who All right, gets, but, who gets the but ball. But there's no clock, the ball. right? No, there is no clock. Okay. But at least you have a chance to go talk to your uh, go talk to your coach and uh, set a special play if you want. 
and as we mentioned, Skyline in overtime will go to deception. They'll go to trickery. They did that against Davis in overtime in the regular season when Davis had the ball in OT, scored a touchdown, kicked an extra point. Skyline scored a touchdown and then went for two and used an option pass to win the game. So Skyline will definitely roll the dice in OT a little bit. We know that about them. Fremont, we don't know. Coach Blaine Mockers chatting with his club. You saw him down there as they get set for their try at overtime. And let's take you down to the middle of the football field where the coin toss will decide who gets the first shot of this. And Reese is down there. All right, gentlemen. Great football game. Great way to end the season. As you know, the overtime, we play an untimed four-series situation. Both teams will get a chance at it. We'll flip the coin. Fremont, as the visitors will call, they will have the choice of offense, defense, or in the field. Uh, they will choose an offense, defense, or if they wanted to put the ball in play at the north or the south end. If we have another tie, we'll alternate choices and it'll go to use. We're over you folks, Skyline. We'll only toss it once. You get one extra timeout, both of you. So, Skyline, you have two. Fremont, you have one. Who's going to be my spokesman? Okay, same coin. National Federation and the tails, flat-handed. If we drop it, we'll do it again. Call it in the air, please. Tails. Call was tails, and it is a tails. Fremont, you've won the toss. Gives you the option to receive, or excuse me, to go on offense or defense, or to choose an end of field. They will play defense. Okay. So you guys won the toss. You have now the choice of the end of the field, of which you're going to be on offense first. But you, you'll go down. Will you put your backs here? I need a ball, Tim. Do we have a ball? Fremont won the toss and elected to go on defense first. Skyline will get the ball, and they will get four cracks at the north goal, and then it'll be Fremont's turn. But Fremont wants to put the pressure on Skyline by giving them the ball first, because then they can see what Skyline did. They'll know what they need to do. Dave? All right, Reese, good coverage from down there. And Skyline behind Roger Dupay, one of the, well, really the winningest team in postseason. Yeah, you can't really count Fremont. They're three and zero. If Fremont ends up four and zero, I don't think they're going to care who the winningest no. coach in the post. I don't think either team cares who the winningest coach. In the no. You had an interesting uh, conversation with him. You asked him after 19 years, Coach, how do you how do you get these guys motivated? How do you get up for games? Well, and two interesting things he said is one, he says the best way to get them motivated is just, is just get bigger, stronger, and faster players. <laughs> then it's easy to motivate them. And he has got a good football team. Talk about the poise, win or lose here. Talk about the poise Skyline has shown. Six turnovers, down 14 to three. I mean, they could have folded. That was a great rally by Skyline. Absolutely. And now we're in overtime. You get four plays from the 10 yard line. Gus Papanicholas will bring his team out. One thing about turnovers here, Dave, fumbles, what if and interceptions, fumbles and interceptions cannot be returned by okay. Fremont for points. They'll keep it on the ground, and there's four yards. Although it does stop the possession. For instance, if there's a uh, turnover here on second down, Skyline's done, it's Fremont's ball. But Fremont cannot step out in the flat, intercept the pass out in the flat, and run it back for points at the other end. That kind of gives you uh, the ability to cheat a little bit. Now the officials are going down to the corner because fans are working their way onto the field, and the officials want them off. They want them up in the stands. Uh, Skyline fans beginning to pour out of the stands into the northeast corner of the end zone, and they're going to make everyone go back up the stairs. Well, I wonder if these fans understand that even if Skyline scores here, Fremont gets a shot. Well, I hope they do because Skyline was in two overtime games you in the regular think. season. So you think they got a good idea what's going on. They beat Davis and Timpview in overtime in consecutive weeks. Part of their 11-game win streak. Skyline's been in a lot of close games. They beat Bountiful by two in regulation, and they had one-point overtime wins against Davis and Timpview, and then they had the two-point playoff win over Hunter with three seconds left in the game. They kicked the game-winning field goal. So it's not like Skyline has not had to perform in pressure situations at the end of the game. Meanwhile, Fremont has not been in an overtime game this year, and they haven't been in too many close games. Second down. Well, 
there's going to be five free yards. Well, not quite five. It'll be half the distance, yeah. but three. It's going to be second and goal at the three, which when you're running that fullback dive as effectively as Skyline has, you got to like your odds. Second and goal from the three with Kojima. So they'll get second down again. Second and three. Kojima, no. Papa Nicholas keeps. Touchdown, Eagle. here is do you go for one or do you go for two usually in the situation skyline is going first you would go for one but hey they've shown that they will roll the dice a little trickery Fremont's gonna have to keep some people at home just in case they cannot commit to blocking this thing skyline will take one of those two timeouts that they have <laughs> to discuss this you can go for two I mean you can roll the dice put a little pressure on them Skyline's done some unconventional stuff before. Here's the uh, touchdown run one more time. Second and goal at the three. Skyline's got to like their odds from here. Fake the dive. You got to respect Kojima the way he's been going today. He may, I mean, Papa Nicholas gets the touchdown there and makes the big play, but did you see everyone commit to Kojima? Yep. And Kojima made that happen as a decoy. Reese, you've seen a few of these. Do you go for one or two? Well, I, I think you I think you play it safe and you go for one. You get the point, you get the seven points, and you hope your defense can hold uh, Fremont out of the end zone. But I think you go for one here, Dave. Well, they're discussing it do now. You, do you call timeout to set up going for one? <laughs> are, are you just planting a seed in somebody's well, mind here? Rich Critchman is on the field, so I assume yep. they're going to kick it. Yep, they are. Well, they're lining up and look as if they're kicking. I mean, you would expect them to, but after what they did in the regular season against Davis, who knows? Richfield for the point after. Yes, got it. The Eagles come back, continues. They're up 21-14, and now Fremont will get a shot. The extra point. I mean, you think, ah, it's an extra point. So crucial. So many overtimes are decided by one point. You'd be surprised with all the pressure riding on it, how many times they can execute it. Now they'll stay at the same end of the field. And Fremont setting up their plan. The way Keep Fremont in mind, in here, the yeah, they haven't run the ball well no. at all. See, this is where you want to be able to run the ball. You got to figure that they're going to throw four passes down here. I mean, they got four shots now from 10 yards out. And, you know, it reminds me of what they, how they scored their first touchdown. The ball's in the middle of the field. They got a receiver isolated on the near side, fake inside, go outside. Yep. Hannum's got the arm strength. And, he can get, and, and they've got so many good receivers that they know they can get one guy isolated anywhere. He can be the guy. I mean, they can, they can go to Van Tassel, they can go to Bryant, they can go to anyone. And you always got to wonder about Hannum on the quarterback draw, if nothing else. Owen Hannum, the quarterback. He will go to the air. Just gets rid of the ball. Very fortunate to release that ball. I think he threw that left-handed. He did. He it threw that left-handed. Well, he, he was wrapped up, ready to go down, and they end up with a three-yard pickup. Doug Flutie would be so proud. Way to add limb. Way to make a play. You could be sinking and goal at the 20. He unloads it left-handed and completes it. What a play. Oh, man. Very happily with the reception. That thing was end over end. That was Ken Stabler for the Raiders to beat the Dolphins. That was unbelievable. Second down. Hannum to the corner. No. Beyond the reach of Kip Nielsen, and that'll bring up their third shot at it from the seven-yard line. 
Boy, you'd love to be an option team down here, wouldn't you? Uh, Skyline does, and is. Yep. That's okay, Fremont's got four cracks at it. They got two more. Third and goal from the seven. Boy, if they don't complete here, can you imagine the pressure of one play for the state title? We're getting close to that. Third down. Anna being chased. He's got to throw it away. One play for the state championship. One play. Skyline down 14 to three in the fourth. He's got an OT lead at 21-14, and it's fourth and goal from the seventh. And you can see the Eagles are pumped up as they brought a very heavy rush on that last play. And now a timeout taken by Fremont. They take their only one. As you pointed out, it's all on this play. Here's a look at the third and goal from the seven. Good pass rush, pressure. You gotta put pressure on Hannum and he's gotta throw it away. You know, you wonder at this point how much the mental matters as opposed to the physical. You got a bunch of kids in Skyline. You got whole families. I mean, Isaac Bill's dad played on two Skyline title teams. He grew up expecting to win. You got Hanson, whose two older brothers have won state titles, whose dad won a state title at Highland. Skyline's just got so much tradition, so many people experience, and they played 11 playoff games the last three years. They expect to win when they're in situation, in this situation. And Fremont, not in the same situation, but boy, as many big plays as they've made today, you hate to count Fremont out. Yep. Owen Hannum brings them to the line. Their last play, unless they score, this is their last chance. Hannum in trouble. Nowhere to go. Throws it up for grabs. He caught it. Was Hannum over the line of scrimmage? Skyline thinks he was. No flag yet. I Incredible. Think count it. Unbelievable. What a play. Touchdown, Fremont on fourth and goal. Let's see on the replay if he was over the line. The, he's right in front. As he comes up, you'll see a referee just inside the tent on the left. Now you can't quite see him. Unbelievable. Wow. What a play. What well, a great Reece. individual effort by Olin Hanna. Reese, that was right in front of you. Did it, it appeared that uh, he did not cross the line of scrimmage. Oh, no. How did it look from your angle? It was close, but he knew right where he was. But I'll tell you what. Fremont was dead and buried, and you talk about resurrections. Olin Hannum did it all by himself. What an incredible job of staying alive, eluding the tacklers, and then finding somebody open in the end zone. I'll tell you, an incredible play, and it's keeping this game alive, and let's see if they go for one or two for the tie or the win. Now, there's an interesting question. Well, this is why they deferred. This is why they wanted Skyline to have the ball first, so they'd know what situation they were in. Boy, after that kind of escape, I don't know. I know, but I would be so tempted to go for two. Olin Hannum, 20 of 39 for 308 yards, three touchdowns and an interception, and it doesn't really do justice to what he's done today. That's the amazing thing, as good as those numbers are. It looks to me like they are gonna go for it. The state championship is riding on this play. No receiver split wide. Skyline is your champion.
Eagles, man, on. an incredible finish as Jake Bryan had the football right in his hands and couldn't hang on. The Eagles are your state 5A champions, and we'll be back. The 5A high school football finals have been brought to you by First Security Bank. Currently giving you 110%. By your Intermountain GMC truck dealers. By Coca-Cola. Always competitive. Always Coca-Cola. And by RC Willie, Utah's largest electronics dealer. Nobody beats RC Willie. I don't think being the best means you have to be the tallest or the fastest, or have the best outside shot. To me, being the best means that when the competition is giving 100%, you get 110. First Security Bank, currently giving 110%. Blowing away all the others, KSOP. We're all the country you need. 104.3 KSOP, Utah's best country. When gas pain and bloating make me feel like this, I take a new gas fighting pill that looks like this. Gas X introduces new extra strength Gas X soft gels. With as much gas fighting medicine as this much Mylanta, concentrated in an easy to swallow soft gel for powerful relief that gets to your gas pain fast. So I feel like me again. Now get easy to swallow gas pain relief in new extra strength Gas X soft gels. A truly great restaurant a variety of entrees, and a complimentary visit to the gourmet chocolate bar with evening meals. The Peppercorn, a steakhouse with variety. Skyline wins the state championship 21 to 20 is the final score, and it was in the hands of young Jake Bryant. Let's take a look at the two-point conversion that would have given the title to Fremont. Owen Hannum rolls out, fires into the end zone. Brian's got it, but he just can't hang on. A heartbreaking drop for that young man who's had a great year. And Reese Stein is somewhere down in the celebration among the Skyline Eagles. If we can find him, Reese, are you there? This is Nick Hansen. Congratulations, Nick. You kept a family tradition alive. Yeah, it was just a team effort, you know. Tradition or not, you know, it was just a team effort, you know. You watched the game, double overtime. Defense came through for us. It's a defense's game, man. You guys were almost dead and buried in that fourth quarter. What happened? What got you going? You know, we just believe. You know, our motto all year has been you got to believe. And we just believe. We never say die. This team's never said die throughout the whole year. Nick is the fourth member of the Hanson family to be on a state championship team. His older brother, Matt, was on Skyline's title team in 90. Their oldest brother, Chris, was on Olympus' title team in 84. And their father, Dave Hanson, was on our state championship team in Highland back in 61. Congratulations. That's it. Back to you, Dave. We're getting swamped down here. The Skyline Eagles, definitely a team of destiny this year and a team of the 90s. Their third state championship and they win it in overtime. 21 to 20 is the final score. And David James, what a finish and a heartbreaking drop for young Jake Bryan, who's been great all year. After that kind of drama and that close a game, somebody is going to end up really disappointed at the end. That's a tough way to lose it at the end, but you knew it was going to happen to somebody. What a been, great game. It's been a fantastic afternoon. What a great finish. Skyline is your 5A champion. They win it 21 to 20 in overtime. Two News is up next for the entire Channel 2 sports team. So long from Rice.